Hello everyone, welcome to Veterans Memorial Stadium where today the 79th annual Thanksgiving Day football game between the Quincy Presidents and North Quincy Red Raiders will take place here at the stadium. It will be a great day and a great game. Thank you for joining us for QATV's coverage. My name is Jonathan Caleri and I'm being joined by Jim Timmons. And Jim, we always look forward to this day every year. At the beginning of the football season we say we're looking forward to Thanksgiving and it's finally here. Yeah, you're right, John, and it came very quickly. It just seems it seems like a couple of weeks ago we were here uh, on a hot September Friday getting started. But the season's coming to a conclusion, and while it's been a rough one for both teams, they're very, very evenly matched for today's game, and uh, both squads know it. Both squads are very excited because this is an opportunity for them to define their season, even though they've had, uh, they both have had kind of a rough outing to date. Um, Quincy comes in with a record of two and seven. North Quincy with a record of two and eight. So you mentioned the tough seasons. Both teams have played a pretty tough schedule, though, and they've played some pretty close games. Just haven't been able to get over the top. A lot of that is uh, the depth of the teams, uh, especially North Quincy. Not a lot of numbers on their team. Yeah, you're right, John. That was an issue all season for both squads. Quincy battled the injury bug. North Quincy had a numbers issue all season, but. Um, the important thing is the kids have hung in there the whole time, and that's what's very important. It's a tribute to the senior leadership, to the coaches, and uh, that's why we're going to have an exciting game today. All right, we uh, do have some guests throughout the day here on the pregame show. We're going to be joined momentarily by Mayor Tom Koch as he gets his microphone, and we'll join the mayor. Morning, gents. Mayor, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, John. Morning, Jim Mayor. I, well, Jim and I were just talking about how... Um, Everyone looks forward to this game each year, and it really kicks off the holiday season here in the city of Quincy. Sure does. It's a great tradition. Uh, you know, we had the Hall of Fame dinner the other night. See the seniors in both schools, a chance to say hello to them and congratulate them, not only on their season, but on how they conduct themselves on and off the field. And, of course, uh, the game, big game today, and, and we hope uh, we have a good crowd. And uh, certainly Friday night kicks off the lights, Saturday the Santa jump, and Sunday the big parade. So it is a terrific weekend, a great tradition here in Quincy. It's certainly interesting how this game... Uh, it divides the city, but it unites the city together. You know, everyone wants the, their, their alumni to win, but they always come to the game and they're very happy to see everyone on both sides of the field. No, that's true. Um, no question about it. I mean, you have friends from both sides of the city. You know, the, the kids grow up and get to know each other from all the sports they play, not only football, and uh, they play hard against each other and they have some laughs after the game. It's a great tradition. It truly is. And uh, it's going to be harder and harder for me to be neutral as my... My oldest dad at North Quincy High this year is a freshman, so uh, though I'm, I appear neutral, I have a little red somewhere. <laughs> I can't show it. <laughs> yeah, right. your son Cornelius is in the football program. We know he played uh, over the past weekend, and the Quincy freshman won that game, correct? That's correct, 32-16. Yeah. to 16. All right, good game, though. Four good. touchdowns on one side, two on the other. Good matchup, and hopefully Cornelius will be part of the group that rejuvenates at least the numbers, not the spirit necessarily, but the numbers at North Quincy. Absolutely. Uh, both both schools do a great job, both principals. Uh, it's a good op opportunity also. It's talking about the tradi tradition, the weekend, the game, but, uh, you know, we should thank our principals and our teachers and what they do every day for our kids in the classroom. Um, you know, they do it every day, uh, and uh, we have a great school system, and superintendent and his team, great leadership, uh, and so it's Great school, great schools, great city, great tradition here this weekend. And certainly as mayor, I'm grateful this Thanksgiving for, uh, for the opportunity to serve as mayor, but also grateful to the people of the city for what they do to make it what it is. Well, that's nice of you. And good of you to stop by today, Mayor. Um, we'll watch the uh, young men showcase the talent at their respective schools, see what happens. Thank you, Jim. John, have a, nice have a good day. Thanks a lot, Mayor. We appreciate it. So, Mayor Tom Koch, we want to thank him for joining us here on the pregame show. Uh, we're going to get the principal of North Quincy High School in just one moment. But, Jim, why don't we talk about North Quincy? We mentioned um, just over the mayor and just before that as well that they uh, have not a lot of numbers this year, uh, but they're certainly coming along strong. And actually, we're going to be joined by Principal Earl Metzler. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Uh, talk about this team and um, how they've done this uh, so far this year. Uh, not a lot of numbers, but a lot of spirit. Correct. You know, it's, a, it's not about quantity, it's about the quality. And, and, and what we're really proud about this particular group of kids is they exemplify, you know, some of our core values and beliefs at the high school. You know, they're, they're smart kids, so it's about knowledge. They have really strong character, and uh, it's about service. They, they do a lot for the community, for their families, for the school. So, you know, we're most proud about that. They, they really exemplify those, those core values that we, we, we really hold in, uh, important to us at, at North Quincy High School. Yeah, it's a great culture at North, absolutely, and I know you focus on that as a uh, principal. Why don't you talk about that a little bit, some of the programs that this senior class have been part of? Excellent. Well, yeah, this senior, this senior class has really embraced um, 
you know, it's character education. And so all the programs that really, you know, they, they're a smart group of kids, but they really understand how important it is to build your character. And, and they do that by uh, reaching out and doing kind things for others. Like, for instance, raising money for a children's hospital that your daughter's very much involved in. Mm -hmm. and, and they do, they just do great work. And uh, we're really, really proud of that. Yeah, that character is going to be tested today as uh, there's a small group of seniors that has to lead a small band of Red Raiders in this, uh, this big game. That's true, but you know, it's uh, you know, once again, it's about quality, not about quantity. So we're, we're, I think we'll be okay. And before you go, I'd just like to say, Mrs. Metzler, when you're watching, it's time to go through your husband's closet. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the most yeah. incredible collection of suit coats. Well, I appreciate that. And I, also, I also wanted to, you know, wish all those families, uh, North Quincy families and Quincy families, a very happy and healthy Thanksgiving. All right, thank you for thank stopping by. My pleasure. Hope happy you have Thanksgiving. A great we Thanksgiving. appreciate your time. All right. Oh. Right, so we want to thank Earl Metzler here for uh, joining us, and we're going to be joined momentarily by uh, Frank Santoro, the principal of Quincy High School. So we'll bring in Frank right now. Gentlemen, how are you? Nice Frank, happy you. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to both of you. Yeah. Talk about this Quincy High football team this year. Uh, they've had a tough year uh, going through the schedule, but they've uh, played their hearts out every game. Yeah, we uh, started the year with hope. We had hoped a great backfield, uh, and what had happened was we never really had all three uh, back fielders uh, in place because of injuries during the course of the year and uh, now here we are at Thanksgiving and uh, our quarterback Andrew Sheff has uh, got an injury so at least we got our three halfbacks back and uh, so um, I was anxious to start the school year watching making sure that uh, we could be healthy all the way through the year but that just doesn't work although uh, the, uh, the people who filled in did a great job as well. I had a chance to speak with Bill Radin earlier in the week, and he just talked about the leadership of the seniors and the captains. Talk about them and how they've led this team. Yeah, we uh, have uh, about uh, eight seniors uh, that are graduating, and um, it's a small group. Uh, I don't know if you remember way back uh, when we were constructing our new high schools, people seemed to uh, want to vacate and go elsewhere during the construction period. So the senior class was a small class, and these uh, kids started out, I think, as a freshman team with 12 kids, and through the four years hung together. Uh, and. Uh, I think today, after being with the kids last night, uh, the, the underclassmen want to really win this game for those uh, eight seniors this year. Yeah, and they have been a terrific group, you're right, in terms of battling the injury bug because it hit this senior class uh, very hard. But um, you have Curran Jorgensen stepping in as a quarterback um, to take the place, uh, you said, of uh, your injured quarterback. And um, why don't you talk a bit about some of the individuals like Curran and then Reggie yeah. Caesar, a name we talked about two years ago. Um, his name's been showing up for a long time here on Thanksgiving. Yeah, well, Curran, uh, as we gain a quarterback in Curran, we lose an end. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> because he did both very well. Yeah. And I'm sure he'll step up to the plate today. Uh, Jaquan uh, Harris is an excellent athlete. Uh, uh, state numbers in his uh, speed in the 200. Uh, he's healthy today, thank God. I'm uh, happy to see him back. Uh, we lost uh, Reggie really at the beginning of the season with an ankle injury, and uh, we all had high expectations. And he's been able to spend uh, the season playing through an injury that's been pretty tough for him. And then obviously our third quarter, uh, third half back is uh, uh, Jalen. Green, who is uh, healthy again today after an ankle injury. So, like I said, we have the three back today. Hopefully, they'll uh, sprint like they can. Yeah, that was bad news for the Red Raiders. Good news for Coach Bill Reardon that uh, the young men who have been out, particularly Caesar and Green, with the balky ankles, uh, seem to be coming back online for Thanksgiving. So we're happy about that. Yeah. Today, yeah. <laughs> well, good luck. Uh, Mr. Santoro, I hope the, the presidents have a good outing today. It'll be nice for the small group of seniors, as you said, and good for the school. They've got to turn this around here. They, they, they will, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, maybe last for a long time, but yeah. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> it's a great day for football. If you're not here yet, you need to get down here because uh, it's a wonderful day. And uh, on behalf of the Quincy High School family, we wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Right. Thank you very much. We Thank appreciate you. your time. Thank Thanks you. Morning. Thanks Thank for you. coming over. Like Principal Santoro just said, you know, if you are listening at home right now, feel free to come on down to the stadium. Kickoff is at 10 a.m. Uh, if you can't get down here, we will have live coverage on QA TV Channel 8, uh, so you can listen in if you can't make it down here at the stadium. Uh, we're going to be joined now by the superintendent of the Quincy Public Schools, Richard DeCristofaro. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Superintendent, Good morning, happy Thanksgiving. Doctor. How are you? How are you? Doing great, thank you. Good. Doing great. Good. Good. A pleasure to be here this morning. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> oh, it yeah. is a beautiful day, and we say every year it's always one of the highlights of the year, and it's really one of the biggest sporting events here in the city of Quincy each year. Yeah, it really is, and it is all about tradition. 
and this is the 79th game, I believe. And uh, you know, and there's so much. It's about our, our athletes, our coaches, our cheerleaders, and so many of the parents. It's also about a whole city coming together and having a great Thanksgiving. So uh, it, it really is great to be here. I just want to know how come you're all dressed up with a scarf and me too, and this young guy here. You know, doesn't have no scarf. No <laughs> well, John is part of the bull crew. John does everything at QATV. He's on-air talent and off-screen bulwark. So. When I was here early in this morning, it was a little bit chilly, so I had a jacket on then. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the weather is great, so we should have a great crowd. And uh, I think whoever whoever arrives here today is going to have uh, just a, a great game and a great time. And, and again, it's a memory maker. You know, everything is about memories and about tradition in Quincy and the Quincy Public Schools. So it's going to be a great day. Yeah, one of the things we were talking about is both teams have kind of small numbers. You know from your days, you've been involved both as an athlete, as a, you know, a coach, and as a uh, administrator in the system for a long time. Uh, this is a little different in Quincy, having smaller programs in football. We've taken great pride in our football over the years. Uh, but the group, they both seem ready today. It's very yeah. interesting. Yeah, I yeah. think the numbers, I think you'll see the numbers, you know, uh, rise in the next three or four years, you know, at, at both schools. So, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're pleased about that. You know, it, but it, again, you know, more kids get a chance to play, more athletes mm. would do we have to be overplayed, of course, you know, and be tired mm. and, you know, but uh, these kids love to play football. Mm. So if they're going from offense to defense and they do it well, you know, they, they're going to uh, really appreciate the day. Yeah, and they're well matched. Although both teams, we talked earlier, they're coming in with uh, not the types of records they'd hope for. Uh, it's a well-matched crowd today. It should be an exciting game. I think it always is, and you know, no matter what happens, you know, I mean, if it's a tie, that wouldn't be such a bad thing. <laughs> you know, if both schools go back and work really hard. But yeah. um, you know, whoever is victorious, you know, that, that's a wonderful thing. But I, I think for these kids, they never forget today. They never forget this game. They never forget being this centerpiece. You know, and uh, they'll talk about it for years to come. Well, we want to thank you for coming on our pregame show and taking some time out and have a happy thank Thanksgiving. You. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a great have a Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. All right. We'll see you later. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the week, I did have the opportunity to talk with both coaches. We're going to go to the coach, uh, Jim Connor, first. Uh, I spoke with him yesterday down at, just after the rally at North Quincy High School. Uh, so let's go to the interview now and see what Coach Connor had to say about today's game. Well, we're here now with Coach Jim Connor of North Quincy High School. Jim, uh, thanks for taking some time out. I know it's a busy week. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been crazy. We got banquets and uh, you know practices and uh, meetings and left and right. Yeah, it's, but it's uh, but obviously you know this is a, this is all part of it. It's very important. Talk about all the preparation that goes in with the kids this week, with all the stuff that happened, like you said, the banquets and all the the media attention and you know the parents and alumni. How do you keep them focused for the game? Yeah, it's difficult. I mean, there is a ton of distractions and and rightfully so. You know, it's such a uh, a big game and, and a, with, a, with a long history, you know, 79 years now running. So, so they have to understand the importance of, of the fact that it is a big game, yet they do have to still know that it's just a high school football game and we're going to go out and uh, one, you know, once the whistle starts, we, um, you know, it's just a regular game like we've had all season and in past years. So just got to stay focused and just keep working on our own stuff and keep getting better ourselves and that usually keeps them focused on, uh, on the game and not looking too, you know, wide-eyed into the situation. Uh, let's get to the team on the field this year. Uh, talk about the injuries you've had this year. Um, a little bit have been an issue for the team this year, and uh, it's affecting your depth, I would assume. Yeah, um, you know, we, our depth was is a little uh, was a little rough to begin with. Um, you know, we have about 30 or so on the team, um, and you know, Marquise Chase got hurt. Uh, he missed two games, so you know that's you know that now we got to bring in some some young guys and and uh, other guys have to take on more of a leadership role. So, uh, and it hurt us. I mean, we lost you know, one game by 3 nothing that he didn't play. So, you know, we'd like to have a lot of those games back because he's our, um, you know, our strong runner, lead, leading rusher type guy. So, but, um, but, you know, it only made our team better because um, guys like Antoine Allen and Walter Hannon had to take on a different responsibility. And, uh, and now going into this game, being at full strength, they all have that experience. So it can really help us out. Have a lot of players been playing both sides of the ball this year, and how's that affected the team? As we get a lot more experience, and they can learn a little bit more. If someone was more offensive-minded, and they can learn the defense, does that help them? Yeah, we got about nine guys going two ways, and this is the the downside of having uh, minimal, you know, uh, uh, you know, depth, and just not having enough enough guys to to back up. You got you know a lot of two-way players, and the downside is there is that everyone we're tired, and kids got to learn two positions and things like that, and that takes a toll on on kids, and um, you know, and the the good side good side is though that you know they're you know they're invested. I mean they're completely invested in 
you know, they, uh, you know, they live and breathe, you know, the whole game in its entirety because they're doing special teams, the offense, defense, and they don't want to let anybody down. And we're young, so then that, with that experience coming back next year will only help us. Talk about the captains and what they've done this year to keep the team together. Um, I'm sure it, your record uh, is 2-8. and eight. You've had some close games. Um, how have they done this year to keep the team together? Yeah, they've done an outstanding job, and they have a, they've had a harder job than, than the captains I've had in past years when we've had winning records and, and done really well. Um, they've had a tough job in just trying to keep, um, you know, just trying to keep the uh, the morale up, and and you know, week in and week out, that's difficult to do. But they've, you know, talked to the team and had meetings and stuff like that, and really, uh, really made sure that we're focused on the goals, especially this week. Talk about the coaches and what they've done. You talk about keeping the morale up. Uh, must be tough on the coaches to get them going up every day. And also with the injuries and kids going both ways, making sure they learn the positions and everything like that. So talk about the coaches and what they've done this yeah. season. Uh, the, coach, the coaches obviously are, are doing an outstanding job. The, uh, the, um, the assistant coaches I'm talking about now, uh, <laughs> been doing, they've been doing a great job. And it's tough you know, keeping the kids you know, excited and, and thinking that, that, you know, that they're going to win every single week that we go out to play. And that's a tough job. And they've done an outstanding job doing it. You know? So you know, definitely take my hat off uh, for those guys they really uh, you know I wouldn't be be here where I am now without those guys so I'm really happy that I have them on the staff talk about some of the games and teams that you played this year you played some tough teams uh, some teams you haven't played in a while uh, but specifically I want to talk about Duxbury a tough team uh, you played them tough obviously it was a uh, tough loss for you but um, talk about the team the experience taking that game and playing one of the top teams in the state and how it affects them yeah I love playing I love playing Duxbury um, I think that we always we play we play up a little bit for them. Now they're just a uh, you know an outstanding football team, and, uh, and Dave Mamron's doing a great job over there. But um, you know playing those kind of games really uh, kind of sets the tone for the rest of our uh, you know league games. We usually play them early, and um, and you know going into the rest of our, our league league opponents there. And um, and you know and the, the fact that we you know still able to run the ball is always a positive sign. You know that we can still get our base stuff in and run it and. And, uh, you know, it just really just can set a tone for the rest of the season. Talk about uh, the game of Thanksgiving. Uh, what are some of the goals you're looking for your team to go into the game to uh, beat Quincy High? Well, uh, defensively, it's try to just avoid the big play. Uh, they got, you know, a couple good running backs, and we got to make sure we just, you know, contain them and just, you know, no, nothing, no long runs, no, no uh, throw, throw behind us, and, you know, just try to keep them, uh, you know, make them earn every single touchdown, every point that they, that they score. Um, and offensively, just you know, just continue what we do, and just keep taking steps forward, and just keep moving the ball, moving the chains, you know, you know occupy the, the ball and control the clock, and uh, and then just hopefully things will work out in the fourth quarter and we win the game. Talk about the seniors and them getting ready for this game. This is their final game at North Quincy High School. Um, they've won a couple of games in a row on Thanksgiving Day, so it feels good. Um, talk about how they're getting the other team, the rest of the team, ready to go up, and how they're feeling for their last game. Yeah, I don't even think the seniors have to do do much. I think now that the system is set in place where the underclassmen know that it's their responsibility to match the seniors' um, intensity and focus for this game. As soon as we get into, um, we finish our last game of the season, our regular season, right? You know, before the, the Thanksgiving Day game, uh, you can see a different uh, a shift in in our attitude. And, uh, and once you can see the shift, all, everybody responds right away. And it's every year. Um, so they ha they've, you know, haven't really had to do much besides just continue what our, what our seniors have been doing and just you know, show that this, is a diff this means something different to us and, uh, and become, become focused, ready to go, and, and uh, you know, get to do our best to get the win. Uh, after Thanksgiving Day, planning for the next season pretty much begins. What are some of the long-term goals you have for your program to get the program ready for, for next year, but also maybe you know, five years down the line? What do you have planned for that? Well, you know, the immediate goal is to you know, get those numbers back up. So, you know, you know, get into the hallway recruiting, and our, our, uh, our numbers are, um, our freshman class numbers are high. So I think in a year or two, this should be, uh, the numbers should be back up again. And, and just keep, you know, keep trying to work on, our, on you know, football and just work on the game. And just get better at the stuff we do well, and um, you know, and, and there's no, re no reason to overdo it or overcoach. Just you know, just get in, get in the habit of, you know, getting a routine and get, um, just keep working on the basics and the fundamentals, and, and and things will work out. Well, we'll let you get back to your final run through. Everyone behind us and our busy day, and good luck on Thanksgiving Day. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. We appreciate it.
Welcome back, everyone, to QATV's pregame coverage here for the 79th Annual Thanksgiving Day football game. My name is Jonathan Clary, and I'm being joined now by Sean Brennan, who is the sports editor for the Quincy Sun. Sean, happy Thanksgiving. Same to you, John. How are you? Pretty good, thanks. Uh, we're here at the stadium, finally, for Thanksgiving Day. Both teams have been waiting for this. Uh, talk about your coverage of the teams this year. What have you seen for start, we'll start with North Quincy? What have you seen about them this year? Uh, John, real quick, in your, in your introduction with Jim, you guys hit a right on the head. Uh, with North Quincy, it was it was more of a depth issue with them. They uh, they have a bunch of two-way players, not too many numbers, and they've they've struggled a little bit with that. They've been competitive in some games, not so competitive in others. Duxbury, East Bridgewater, two of the best teams in the state. Right. Um, you know they have some they have some talented kids in Marquise Chase, Walter Hannon, sophomore Antoine Allen's a kid you should watch out for today, and uh, junior quarterback Andrew Mitten should should do pretty well. So, you know they uh they have a a big task ahead of them against this Quincy team. That's for sure. Sure. Quincy, they've had a lot of big injuries this year, namely their three running backs. Yep. Uh, they appear to be healthy all for this game, though. Yeah, that's, that was the problem in the beginning for Quincy. They uh, they had three returning all-league uh, starters in Reggie Caesar, Jalen Green, and Jaquan Harris. Injuries kind of ravaged that team early in the season. But like you said, all three are ready to go today, and I, I think it's going to make a big difference today in this game. All right, real quick, what do you think is going to be happening here today? Um, seems like it might be leaning towards Quincy a little bit. Just a little bit, only because of... Uh, the guys like Caesar and Green and, and Harris, quarterback uh, Curran Jorgensen, wide receiver Alex Heffern on offense, then on defense uh, Danella Lopes leading the the way on, on defense. I just think Quincy has a little bit too much depth. You know, I just think I think they're going to wear North Quincy down. It will be a close game, but I think in the end the president should come out on top and end their uh, two-game losing streak to the uh, Red Raiders. All right, well, we uh, encourage everyone to uh, read the Quincy Sun's coverage next week uh, for all the recap by Sean Brennan. Sean, we appreciate your time here on the QATV pregame show. No problem, John. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Have a happy Thanksgiving. All right, real quick, we're going to go now to an interview with Coach Bill Raiden from Quincy High School and get his thoughts here on the season and Thanksgiving Day. Well, we're being joined now by Bill Raiden, who's the head coach for the Quincy Presidents. Bill, we want to thank you for coming on and uh, taking some time out of your busy schedule before the game. Thank you for having me, John. Um, let's talk a little bit about the team this year. Um, two and seven right now, one and three in the league. Um, but it's been a tough season with a lot of injuries. I'm sure it's affected the team a lot. Yeah, it's been. And this is only my fourth year as head coach, but it's definitely been my most trying in terms of health-wise and injury. We started the season, preseason back in August. We had three returning all-league players in Reggie Caesar, Jalen Green, and Jaquan Harris. But come the last scrimmage of the of August, August 31st, Reggie went down with an ankle injury, Jaquan went down with an ankle injury, um, and then throughout the course of the season, we'd get Reggie would come came back and he kind of fought through it, did the best he could. Jaquan didn't return until October, um, and then once we got his with him back, Jalen goes down with an ankle injury. So we've we've really yet to have all three of them on the field at the same time, um, due to health wise, and then. Um, the Situate game, Andrew Schaff, who's playing real well, for coming along for us at quarterback. He really started to take control of that position, was throwing some great balls, reading defenses. He, the poor kid, breaks his collarbone. Um, and so that was an issue. Uh, another defensive lineman of thought was Jaleek Leary, who we were counting on, who played real well for us throughout the season. He ended up hurting his knee in one of those games. So it's been an interesting season injury-wise. Now, how's that affected the depth of your team? You know, you, you expect to have these guys coming in and, and playing a lot of minutes, and then they go down with injuries. So you have, you don't have a lot of seniors on the team. So you have a lot of juniors and sophomores. They've been stepping in, I assume. Yeah, it com becomes kind of a silver lining type of thing. So those juniors and sophomores who you would have no intention of playing early on now get some valuable game experience for the future, which um, hopefully will bode well for next year and the year. Come. How have your captains done this year trying to keep everything together? Because with all the injuries and you know people missing time at practice and games, how have they done to keep all the team together? Yeah, I, the captains, we have three of them. They've done an outstanding job in that regard. Um, Nick Lepore, a tight end. Keenan Daniels, who plays offensive def defensive line for us. And then Reggie Caesar himself, who you know, it, it could have been real easy for him to just say, oh, this is a mess. Here goes my senior year. But to his credit and to, to with Nick and Keenan as well, they've really circled the wagons and they've stayed on one another and they fought through it and they've kept the morale up which is which was nice and how have the coaches done with a lot of the injuries you know each coach has a different duty and you have a different kid in there sometimes every day how's that been, been yeah the coaching staff has really had to earn their paycheck this year <laughs> in terms of teaching the young guys the fundamentals and, and repping it up and repping it up so that they get it um, 
and they've, they've really done an outstanding job. Defensive coordinator Kevin Carey, um, special teams coach Dan Morrill, my two JV coaches Mark Randall, Chris Sullivan, and then the freshman staff as well, Greg Summers, Mike Lorenzano, and Paul Carson. They've, um, have done an outstanding job along with a couple of volunteers, John Green and Scott Pfeiffer. I, I, it's been a phenomenal season by those guys because they've really had to work hard to bring the younger guys along. Let's talk about some of the games you've played this year. Um, like I said, you were 2-7, and 1-3 and three in the Fisher uh, Division of the Patriot League. Uh, we'll start in there. A um, couple good teams in the uh, Fisher Division this year, um, including Pembroke, who's 9-0, and but you played them really tough. Talk about that game. Yeah, Pembroke, kind of interesting. You know, we, they came up on the schedule. We looked at, we just come off a tough handle of a loss. Um, and then here's Pembroke, and we say to ourselves, they're undefeated, um, which which good for them. They're playing well. Um, but our kids, I was very, very proud of the way they played. We had them right up at into ha going into halftime. Um, we had just scored a touchdown to, to, to get in, to, to knock the score down to 7-7. Unfortunately, it came back for a, a you know, questionable penalty. But, um, so it was close at halftime. We came out second half. We had an opportunity to win the game, um, which when you look back at it, they're going to the playoffs and they're undefeated, and we were right there neck and neck. Um, I thought that was a good sign for us. And you played some other uh, tough non-league games as well, Cohasset, uh, Malden Catholic, Whitman Hanson. So a couple of tough teams out there. Talk about the Malden Catholic team, though. They're a Division One team. Quincy hasn't played a Division One team in a while, and you played them very tough. Yeah, I was proud of the guys that night because um, we had... We come off the bye week, and then Malden Catholic comes in, and they were big. They had a lot of big kids. Right. Um, but to to the our players' credit, they weren't intimidated at all. They stepped up the physical effort, um, mentally and emotionally, and they were executed. And we, um, I thought we, you know, unfortunately we we didn't win the game. Um, it was still early on. We were still working experience at the quarterback position. I think we didn't. We were a little one-dimensional that game, but we played hard. We kept it close, and you know, maybe moving forward we can get those. Does playing a tough non-league schedule really help when you get into the division, especially when you're playing uh, teams that are above your division? Quincy's a Division Three team, but you know, playing uh, Malden Catholic Division One, um, uh, Cohasset, they're a Division Four, but a very tough team all yep. around. Yep. Uh, division Two for Whitman Hanson, uh, Plymouth South in the, old, uh, yep. the Atlantic Coast League. Talk about that playing the non-league, getting ready for the league. Yeah, and Canton, who's in the Hockamock League, which is arguably the hardest league in the Eastern Massachusetts. Very tough hitting league. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, there's kind of two philosophies on that. One is you could try to schedule games. Um, try to schedule games that you think you have a chance to win. I mean, obviously, I've scheduled the games I think you have a chance to win um, to build up some morale for the team. But, and the other flip side of that coin is you want to schedule teams that, you know, that, are, that are tough opponents and that you're going to kind of raise your level of play so that you right. know what, where you need to be to be with those successful programs. Like Cohasset, for instance, who's just done an outstanding job down there, Coach Afanisha. Um, you know, that's the kind of level of football we want to get to, and, and you, you, know, you model the behavior that you see. What are some of the successes this team's had this year on both sides of the ball? Uh, well, we, like I said, we've come along with the quarterback position since early on. I, we, Schaff, Andrew Schaff's come along well, then he went down. Um, and with Karen Jorgensen, who stepped in and played very well last week at the quarterback spot against Middleborough. Um, under some real bad weather conditions, it was rain. It was a sloppy, muddy field. Football was like a was caked in mud. <laughs> but he he played well. He took command of the offense, so we were happy with that. Um, defensively, all year long, we've gotten outstanding effort by uh, one of our seniors, Danilo Lopes, at outside linebacker, who ended up getting all league nomination for that position. He's really been a rock solid for us um, back there. And then at free safety, we have a junior playing there at Viet Doan, who's he's. He's stayed healthy enough to be there all season, who's been a good communicator back there, getting because we have people coming in and out every week. But Viet knows where they should be, and he's helped us that way. All right, uh, as we know, Thanksgiving, the big game against North Quincy. Um, this is the 79th time the te two teams have played. What are some of your keys that you've been uh, telling the team leading up to the game that you need to really been working on to beat North Quincy? Yeah, well, to beat North Quincy, we're going to have to make sure that we tackle well. Um, last year, we missed a couple of huge tackles that, that cost us in the end. Um, we want to take care of the football. We don't want to turn it over. Um, you don't want to give them any extra opportunities with the ball. Um, and then you want to avoid. And we want to avoid any stupid penalties. Um, last year, we I thought we did an excellent job of controlling the clock, especially in the second half, time possession-wise. But unfortunately, it's a couple of bad penalties. Um, we ended up shooting ourselves in the foot. 
Does uh, this year's team really remember that loss from last year, especially the seniors and juniors, and has it affected them getting ready for this year's game? Yeah, well, I, I kind of remind them on a regular basis <laughs> of, you know, if you don't take care of business, this is what can happen to you. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, we, we keep that lingering around. But I, it's, it's not like it's haunting them, I don't think. I mean, it's a pretty resilient group. We got here based on the things that we've dealt with this year. So, you know, we're okay. Uh, real quick, what are some of the long-term goals you have for the program? Uh, certainly made strides in your first four years. What are you looking for as the years come along? Yeah, well, we've got a nice junior class coming up with 20 or so kids, um, coupled with a freshman class this year, which is in the 20s. And I think it'll be important for us to make sure that the kids are, are staying active and in shape in the off-season. I really want to work on, we've been fortunate enough to have some very good athletes, skill position players over the years, but we haven't been able to generate any real quality all-league linemen. Um, and I'd like to, that would certainly be a goal of my move forward is try to get some of the bigger kids in the city to come out and stick with it and get bigger and stronger and try to find some of those guys. Well, Bill, we appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule this week to uh, come over to QA TV studios and uh, talk about the game. And uh, good luck this morning. You're welcome. Thank Thanks you. a lot, Bill. Thank we appreciate you. it. All right, everyone, you can see the coin toss is getting ready to get underway here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. Kickoff is just a minute away or so, so we want you to stay tuned for QATV's live coverage of the 79th Annual Thanksgiving Day football game. We'll take one more quick break, and we'll be back with kickoff in a moment. That's all right. Back that way, Quincy there. North Quincy has won the toss. Elected to defer to the second half. North Quincy has won the toss, but will defer. Quincy will be receiving. Shake hands, guys. Let's have a great ball game. Here it comes. Bang. 10 5. Touchdown, North oh Quincy. Big turn of events for the Red Raiders. As a man open downfield. Touchdown, oh, Quincy. Great job. Picked off by Quincy. He has his face for the end zone. And touchdown, President. Welcome everyone to Veterans Memorial Stadium for the 79th Annual Thanksgiving Day football game between the North Quincy Red Raiders and the Quincy Presidents. My name is Jonathan Clare. I'm being joined by Jim Timmons. And Jim, uh, the kickoff is just about to get underway. Both teams have just had the kickoff and Quincy's on the field getting ready to get underway here. Yeah, it's a terrific day for football. I'm sure those of you listening at home, you can look out your kitchen windows and see that. Uh, if you haven't made it in yet, there are some lines outside. Um, you still have time to make it down here and see what is going to be an exciting game. We talked earlier, although the records aren't where either coach would wish they were, uh, both teams are evenly matched, have some exciting players, and as you know, on Thanksgiving Day, when North Quincy plays Quincy, the records go out the window in any event. So we're very excited for today's ball game, John. All right, real quick, before kickoff, we're going to go down to our sideline reporter, Noel DeBona. Noel, take it away with an injury update. Thank you very much for upstairs. Uh, we got just uh, two injuries for Quincy. Talked to Coach Ridden before the game. Uh, we got Andrew Schaft, which is number 12 out, uh, collarbone injury, and also number 75, Jalen Leary. Um, he's going to be out. But Jalen Green is back today, and he's been back from that ankle injury. Back up to you. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot. We appreciate that, Noel. We'll go down to you periodically throughout the day. All right, North Quincy's getting ready to kick off. They're going to be defending the south end zone, kicking towards Quincy, which is defending the north end zone. Arrow Spega will be kicking off for the Red Raiders. Spega can really blast the ball, John. He's uh, been with the program a couple of years now. He's one of the senior leaders, so we're underway. Right, Jaquan Harris is going to field it at his own 13-yard line, crosses the 20 over the left sideline, and gets brought down at the 28. So the Presidents will take over at their own 28-yard line as the 79th Annual Thanksgiving Day football game is underway. Yeah, a guy down there to make the tackle, number 45, one of the captains, Walter Hannon, a name you are going to hear a lot today, folks. Walter plays both sides of the ball. And uh, special teams, he was the first guy down. Nice kickoff by Bega. Fielded well by Quincy, John. They're going to start with decent field position at their 28. Curran Jorgensen at quarterback. All right, Quincy opens up with an I formation. Two receivers to the right of Jorgensen. And we're going to have a flag thrown. Both teams move on the offensive line and defensive line. We'll see who gets the call. 
the line judge coming over. We have a dead ball foul. Defensive encroachment. Still first down. Nice job by current Jorgensen there, John. A little hard count, trying to take advantage of the eagerness and the high adrenaline flow there as the game is uh, just getting underway. With his hard count, he puts uh, his presidents in a first and five situation at the 33. Jalen Green goes wide right as well as Alex Heffernan. Quincy again in the eye formation. Jorgensen back to pass, looking way down the field, looking for Jalen Green, and it is incomplete. Jalen Green had to go in and out of his hands at the North Quincy 32-yard line. What a call by Ridden. Let me tell you, he gives Jorgensen a little high five as he comes to the sideline to get the play. Jorgensen threw a beautiful ball there, John. It was to the outside shoulder of Green. Green had to make an adjustment. It came over his shoulder. Tough play for him to make. He almost made it. Uh, but a terrific call. They caught the Red Raiders a little flat-footed there. If Green had been able to haul it in, he would have had nothing but Green ahead of him. So gutsy call on the opening play of the game. Fair warning for the Red Raiders to be ready in that defensive backfield. Second down and five now for the Presidents. Going to hand it off over to the left side. Reggie Caesar, one of the captains, and he's going to get hit behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of two on the play. Yeah, great job by the Red Raiders of penetrating over on the right side. You see number 42 for North Quincy. Another guy we've talked a lot about this year, Kevin Papadopoulos, a junior linebacker. One of the guys in on that stop. So Red Raider linebacker shooting the gap there, able to penetrate the left side of the Quincy offensive line and make a stop. And now Quincy is facing a third and six on this first possession. The ball at the 32-yard line of Quincy High School. Jorgensen again back to pass, looking, looking, looking down the right sideline, and it is complete. Jaquan Harris has it at the 20-yard line. 10, 5, touchdown, Presidents. Wow, wide open again. Great play by the Presidents. Um, Jaquan Harris, very exciting ball player. He made the reception, and once he got behind the defensive back, he was gone. If you watch the replay, you're going to see there's Jorgensen delivering a beautiful ball, and you're going to see Harris is at least five yards behind the nearest defender. Breakdown of the defensive backfield. You see Walter Hannon out there. He's a linebacker, John. So there's uh, one problem. Uh, you know, right away you can see. And then Top Tierney, who's playing a safety position, was unable to get over there quickly enough. Presidents with a big scoring play to open things up. The extra point attempt goes wide left. But the Presidents break the ice early, John, with a great 63-yard touchdown. 68. 68-yard touchdown play. All right, so Quincy's on top, 6-0 with 9.50 left to go in the first quarter. And, Jim, that was pretty much the same play Quincy ran on their opening play. They had Harris down the right side, and he couldn't brought it, uh, bring it in. They go right back to it, and this time it's a big touchdown. Yeah, good stuff there. And um, the president's minute and uh, 10 seconds, very effective there. Uh, they looked like, It looked like North Quincy had uh, stacked them up early. They put them in a... Third and six, and it uh, looked like North was going to come up with a stop, but a breakdown of the defensive backfield, uh, which is something that's very correctable. I'm sure that the uh, Red Raider coaching staff will make some adjustments, but Quincy taking advantage early of uh, a mistake of the defensive backfield, and they're on the board with a 6 nothing lead here. John, we should mention we're delighted to be joined in the booth by Martin Dunham, Martin, a statistician for us back in his days at North. He left briefly when he joined the football team. He's part of the North Quincy High program, and he's now a sophomore down at St. John's in New York. And uh, it was good of Martin to come back and join us today. He's going to be assisting us with his uh, statistical work. Oh, look at this. All right, shot. onside kick. It did not make it 10 yards. So Bill Reardon pulling out all the stops early, John. He is not going to fool around here. He's looking to get out on top of the Red Raiders. 
Uh, another gutsy call. All right, we'll go down to the field for the call. As you said, it did not go 10 yards. Yeah, so the Red Raiders are going to start with terrific field position. They're on the Quincy 45. Quarterback Andrew Minton, a junior, comes out to lead the Red Raiders under center. Andrew took over about midway through the season for uh, Joe Brown. And uh, he's a left-hander who can really throw the ball. All right, first play is going to go to the right side, a handoff. You're going to get up to about the 40-yard line. Ball was spotted at the Quincy 45 after the onside kick did not go far enough. And it'll be about a gain of six up to the Quincy 39. Minton joined in the backfield by Walter Hannon, number 45, the down back, the fullback position, and Marquise Chase, who is an exciting ball player. He's a guy, if he can get on track today for North Quincy, the Red Raiders are going to be in it. All right, Hannon over to the right side for North Quincy. He goes to Marquise Chase, still on his feet, and he'll get brought down. Gets a yard or two on the play. We'll see where they spot it. They're going to spot it at the Quincy 37, so bring up third and two. Yeah, Chase is a guy who, if he gets outside, he's got the type of breakaway speed that we saw with Harris on the Quincy touchdown. They're running him inside the tackles here. He just followed Walter Hannon into the hole. Walter got a great block on the linebacker, but it was a defensive lineman for Quincy who pulled down uh, Chase from behind. Uh, number 60, Keenan Daniels. So. Here we go on third down. Chase on the right side. He'll pick up the first down. He crosses the 35. And he'll get tackled at the Quincy 32-yard line. Enough to move the chains for a North Quincy first down. Another nice run by Marquise Chase. Yeah, prior to the game this week, one of the things that Coach Connor talked about was that it was his hope that Andrew Minton would not be going to the air too much. Connor would like this, to see, like this game to be a ground game for North Quincy. He'd like to control the clock, control the tempo, and keep the ball on the ground here. So far, it's been all Marquis Chase. The first down and 10 again, Chase of the carry. Has a open space, cross the 20 yard line, 10, five, touchdown, North Quincy. They come right back and strike again. Wow, back to back touchdowns. And we might have a barn burner here, Jim, with eight minutes left to go in the first. We are tied at six. I'll tell you what, John, we said coming into the game that these are two evenly matched teams. Watch this replay real quickly, and it happens quickly. Chase hits the hole, and now he is gone. He's got green space in front of him, and once he's behind you, you are not going to catch Marquise Chase. Into the end zone, tie ball game, 6-6 six, six, with eight minutes to go. Right. Some penalty, penalty markers, markers come down yeah, before the extra point. This could be in numbers, yes. Participation. The umpire threw the flag, John. Generally, it's their job to count the number of defensive players on the field uh, before the snap. And when you see the flag come from the backfield, defensive backfield, as we did, uh, looks like Coach Connor is going to take the penalty now. And this may, uh, let's see, is, well, nope, they're still going to kick the extra point. I thought they might consider going for two. Let's see what they do. So we have the distance to the goal penalty. It ends up being a yard and a half, so we'll see if it makes a difference here. North Quincy with a swinging gate. They're going to come back in and kick the extra point. Aris Bagan, number 53 for the Red Raiders, gets ready to kick it. Yeah, given the earlier Quincy miss, this point could be a big one. Quincy jump able to get back. Good snap, good hole. Kick is up, and it is good. So North Quincy comes right back after Quincy strikes with a 68-yard touchdown pass. North Quincy comes back, and four plays later, a 28-yard touchdown run by Marquise Chase, and they now lead 7-6. to six. Yeah, great stuff by both teams, John. Very impressed. They've come out ready to go. Normally we see a tentative beginning to this game. With all the excitement and all the adrenaline, the guys are a little too fired up. And... Uh, Traditionally, Thanksgiving Day games have been low-scoring affairs, but as you pointed out, this has all the earmarks of a barn burner early on. The marquee talent for both teams, the running backs, uh, getting on the board early, a 68-yard play for Quincy. And how long was the uh, chase run? A 28-yard run. 28-yarder, so two big plays. 
given what we've seen this season from both teams, John, where uh, the numbers on the North Quincy side are low and Quincy's battled the injury bug, both teams have a lot of guys going both ways. Coaches for North and Quincy have been concerned all year about the big play phenomenon and getting hurt by it. So we're going to look for that going on today here at the stadium as both teams try to big play the other. We have a 7-6 North Quincy lead here with eight minutes to go in the first quarter. All right, Iris Bay gets ready to kick off, and he kicks it deep. Another Going to be fielded kick. by number three, Jaquan Harris. And at his own five-yard line, he starts running to the left sideline. He's going to cut back to his right, and he is met by three North Quincy defenders coming up there first. Looked like it was number 63, Vinny Tran for North Quincy. Yeah, we love Vinny Tran. That's a guy we're going to be talking about a lot. Also in on the tackle, Junior Cole Barrett and Antoine Allen, number 11. Watch the replay here. First of all, we've got to credit uh, Jaquan Harris for fielding this ball. He couldn't quite judge it. He handled it very cleanly. Now watch as he starts to accelerate. There you see Tran, number 63, and then here comes the rest of the gang. Nice hit in there by number 11, Antoine Allen, and then wrapping up uh, Cole Barrett. So good job by special teams. Jorgensen hands it off to the left side. Reggie Caesar with a carry. And he's going to get a gain of about five on first down. So pick up five, second and five now for Quincy High School. Yeah, Caesar has been dogged all season by a balky ankle. Uh, because of that, his playing time has been up and down. Uh, but the good thing about that is the last couple of weeks he's been rested, and he is well rested as they approach the game today, John. Uh, Reggie feeling more healthy, and uh, you rely on that ankle making your cuts. Reggie feeling a little stronger and able to do that, so looks good going inside on that first play. Uh, they gave him six, so it's second down and four from the Quincy 19-yard line. They give it to Caesar again over to the left tackle, and he'll get a gain of two or three. We'll see where they spot the ball. Looks like they're going to spot it at the Quincy High School 22-yard line, so I'll bring up third and one. Yeah, you saw uh, Paul Nigro, number 62, one of the guys getting up. They're running behind that left side over there. Uh, you see big number 60, Keenan Daniels. He's one of the captains of the team for Quincy. And uh, also you see Rich Turpin, number 54, a junior out there. Uh, they've been running over the left side early on here and um, doing so successfully this possession, John. All right, so third down and one for the Presidents at their own 23-yard line. And Jorgensen's going to keep it himself. A flag is thrown on the play, it looks like. Nope, no, I'm sorry, no flag. It's going to be a first down for Quincy. I'll tell you what, John, very, very impressed with Curran Jorgensen. Um, in the first possession, you recall the hard count. He's had the Quincy line very off balance this entire time just with his count. Um, and on that play, he did a quick count, a keeper. He went over the left side of his center, and he picked up the first down on his own. Very alertly, recognizing the gaps on the North Quincy Red Raider defensive line, and Jorgensen picking up a critical first down for the Presidents as they try to get themselves out of a little hole here. They're now first and 10 at their 25-yard line, so this is a big drive for Quincy early on. Before the game started, Reggie Caesar needed 38 yards to reach 2,000 in his high school career. He's going to be pretty close to that if he hasn't already passed it. Handoff goes to Caesar this time over to the left tackle again. It'll be a gain of five up to the Quincy High School 30-yard line. Second down and five now for the Presidents. Yeah, one thing about Coach Reardon, we saw him call a couple of unexpected plays. But another thing Reardon's done, we saw him do it in 2009. Um, and 2010 actually, but in 2009 particularly. If he sees a weakness in the Red Raider defense, then the presidents will just keep banging away, banging away. Right now they're feeling comfortable going over their left side, and uh, he's just keeping it simple. All right, this time to go to the right. Caesar cuts it back to the left, though, and he goes up the middle, and he'll pick up the first down. Great run by Reggie Caesar. Gets a gain of seven up to the president's 37-yard line and enough to move the chains. Both coaches trying to control tempo here with their offense, trying to stick to this running game and keep the chains moving. 
Right now, Quincy having some success. This is about a four-minute drive right now. We're coming up on 4.30 in the first quarter with the Red Raiders leading 7-6, to six, John. But Quincy on a bit of a march here, first and 10 from their 37-yard line. Sixth play of the drive for the Presidents, again at their own 37-yard line. Jorgensen fumbles the snap, and it looked like he was able to jump on it, though. And, yes, it will be. It will be second down, but it will be a loss of two on the play back to the 35-yard line. Yeah, if you want to watch this replay, you're going to see Jorgensen react. He's very athletic. Uh, here comes the snap. You see the ball come up in the air, but he gets right down on it. Uh, when he's not under center as the quarterback, Curran was the favorite as far as the wide receiver spot goes. Um, when Andrew Schaff was quarterback, one of his favorite targets, Curran Jorgensen, because of the good hands. And there you saw Curran handle that snap very well. Second, second down and 12. Second down and 12 after the fumble. Handoff goes to number three. That's Jaquan Harris trying to get outside. And great pursuit there by North Quincy, led by number 11, Antoine Allen. Yeah, Allen and Hannon stringing the play out. Allen making a great tackle. Uh, pardon me. This is one of the issues we talked about for Quincy uh, when we were speaking of Reggie Caesar and the ankle injury. Allen's another guy. I'm going to call him today's X Factor. Uh, because these are two guys, Caesar and Allen, who have uh, breakaway speed, uh, but that time unable to turn it up the field. Nice job by, I should say, Green on that play, correct? Yes. I beg your pardon, yeah. Antoine Allen, only a sophomore, and Jim, usually every year we see a sophomore, junior, and underclassman have a big game to help win the game for either team. Yeah, and Allen with that speed, great tackle. Take the handoff, Reggie Caesar with a carry, third down and 12. And Caesar's going to get a gain of three on the play. So bring up fourth down and nine for Quincy High School. And they bring up the punt team. All right, big, big stop for the Red Raiders. They stop Quincy at the 38. They have a chance at establishing some field position here as they send Marquise Chase back to take the uh, punt here. And this is an important play for the uh, Quincy Presidents special teams. Alex Heffernan going to do the punting. He's a junior, and this is going to be an important, ex, you know, important for special teams on Quincy to execute on this one, John. Good snap, good punt away. Nice high punt there by Heffernan. Marquise Chase is going to feel it running at his 40-yard line. Crosses the 50 over to the right sideline by North Quincy's bench, and he gets knocked out of bounds at the Quincy 46-yard line. I'll tell you, a terrific tackle over there. I'd love to see a replay on this, but uh, it looks like it was Jackson Lamb, a junior, number 66 for Quincy, who got over there and uh, really blasted Chase. If you watch this replay, you're going to see Chase. He outruns the coverage. Some of the coverage overran the punt there, and Chase is heading down the sidelines. Now watch this. You see Lamb line him up. Actually, it was not Lamb who got the hit. Let's see if we can get that number. But a terrific hit on the sideline. Clean hit, very physical one. And uh, Marcus is going to be facing hits like that all game here. North Quincy leads 7-6 to six with 2.29 left to go in the first quarter. They take over on the Quincy 46-yard line. First down and 10. Marquis Chase with a carry, and he's going to fight his way forward for a gain of 6 up to the Quincy 40-yard line. Second down and 4 now for North Quincy. John, the last few years, the Thanksgiving Day game has been defined by running back performance. Uh, when a team has been able to establish its running game, they've been able to take control of this game. And early on, uh, both clubs going to their horses. For North Quincy, it's Chase. And for Quincy, it's Reggie Caesar. We'll see how North does on its second possession. Quincy stopped on its second possession. North Quincy inside the President territory at the 40. And on the march here. All right, second down in four for North Quincy at the Quincy High School 40-yard line. Marquis Chase with the carry over the right side. And he is met and stopped at the line of scrimmage. Coming up with a hit. Look like it was Danilo Lopes. Also Alex Heffernan in on the tackle. Yeah, North had been running the eye formation. That time they went with a split backfield, John, trying to change things up a little. They ran to the short side of the field, and Quincy just stuffed it. That's a sign that uh, Coach Connor thought that his offensive line could uh, create a little seam there, but no gaps on the part of the blue shirts there. The Presidents did an excellent job of stuffing 
the left side of their defense, right side of the Raider offense on that play. No gain. We're looking at a third and three with under a minute in this first quarter. And ball gets loose, but it looked like Minton was able to bring it back down. And it will be a first down because of that. On the snap, he fumbled it. It came right back up into his hands, though. And he just moved it forward, went straight up the line. We get up to the Quincy 35-yard line, and that'll be enough for a first down. I'll tell you, we saw Curran Jorgensen do the same thing, but that time Andrew Minton reacted very athletically. He's only a junior, has not had the benefit of a full season. This is his first Thanksgiving game, but he looks cool under pressure here early on and did a terrific job of handling that miss snap there, picking up a first down. 30 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Chase with a carry right up the middle. And we'll see where they spot the ball. They're going to spot it at the Quincy 31-yard line. So a gain of four on the play. Yeah, you see Chase getting up. And just before him, uh, big number 71 for the Red Raiders, Matt Daigle. Matt's only a junior, a lineman. He's one of the guys opening the holes, doing the heavy work uh, for the Red Raider offense. And uh, what Coach Connor's going to do now, though, he's going to let the clock run down. And it runs to zero here, ending the first quarter with the Red Raiders leading 7-6, to six, John. All right, real quick, looks like uh, Noel the Boner's down on the sideline with someone to interview. Noel, take it away. Thank you. Down on the field with the new inductee of the Hall of Fame of 2011, um, J.J. Namke, um, 2004, um, down here in Quincy High School. Um, just, you know, seventh year getting in. You, you got in on the seventh year mark. How's it feel? Oh, it feels great. It was just such an honor. You know, um, we got in with a great class. The 2011 class of the Quincy, North Quincy Hall of Fame was just amazing. Um, I had the opportunity to play with some of the inductees, too, Tommy Shruin. And I just meet a lot of the guys from, the, you know, the previous generations. You know, you, you grow up, you're hearing so much about them. And, and it was just a great opportunity, too, to see all the seniors from uh, Quincy and North Quincy. So it was just, it was an honor. Awesome, awesome. Thanks. You know, I'm thinking back of uh, that year you guys won. Uh, was that the old call? Uh, was that the Atlantic Coast League? Yeah, it was the ACL then. It was the back then. Okay. And you guys were 8-1 and one that season? Yep, yep. And yep, you yep, guys yep. won the division? Yeah, we won the league, went on to the playoffs. It was great. Okay, and they end up playing Mansfield in the first round. And I remember being here at that game. It was a very cold, cold <laughs> game out here. Yeah. And I remember number 23 <laughs> returning a kickoff 90 yards for a touchdown. Does it how does it feel like yesterday, or is it is it I, years? It's like the time is flying by. It does. It, like every time I come back here, you know, the memories always start to flutter in, and uh, it feels like it was just yesterday happening. And you're right, that game was so cold. It was like five degrees out, but it was awesome though. Yeah, it was, it was a tough, feeling. tough Mansfield team, uh, by the way. It was, it was. We're both just sitting here on the, the turf field now. You know, how long has <laughs> this been in here? Five years. Yeah. We're both going. Wow, this is great. <laughs> but, I remember when it was all nice and grass. You know. <laughs> all right, sounds good. JJ Namke, 2004. Right. Thank you. Up to Happy you. Thanksgiving. Thanks, Noel. We appreciate it. Back to action. Ball's loose on the ground, and Quincy has recovered. A fumble exchange was uh, a fumble was snapped. Excuse me, uh, between Minton and Walter Hannon, and jumping on it for Quincy High School, Reggie Caesar. Like to see a replay on that one. Uh, that's unfortunate. Here's the replay. You're going to watch Minton step away, and uh, he gets hit by Walter Hannon. Um, there was a miscommunication on that handoff, and uh, Minton was not prepared for the direction Walter took. And so the Red Raiders turn over. Presidents with a big stop here, creating a turnover, and they take over to 37. Low man in the backfield is Caesar, but Jorgensen looking to pass, looking downfield, and it is incomplete. Was looking for Alex Heffernan. Heffernan had it go off his fingertips, couldn't bring it in. Tell you what, another beautifully thrown ball. Curran Jorgensen has thrown three strikes here. Only one of them caught, but a beautifully thrown ball. I will say this, John. If you look at the shadow there on the field, you can see that the sun is uh, in the eye of the receiver. That time the receiver looking right back into a strong morning sun. It's about 10.30 here. And uh, that, I'm sure, affected that play. Flag thrown on the play. Handoff went to Reggie Caesar over to the left towards the Quincy bench. He gets a gain of three, but we'll see what the flag is. Real quick, Jim, first quarter time of possession. Quincy 641, North Quincy 419. Also, Danilo Lopes had six tackles for the president. Marquise Chase for North Quincy, 56 yards rushing. We have offsides on offsides the defense. Against the Raiders. Repeat the down. Tell you what, Jorgensen doing a superb job as quarterback here early on in this ball game. 
That's his second hard count where he's drawn it offside. He's just doing a terrific job of keeping the Red Raiders off balance, John. Um, very, very effective. Quincy's going to get a timeout here. They realize that this is an important opportunity here early on in the game. Both coaches looking to establish tempo and establish uh, their control over this game early on. And uh, we saw that with Reardon on a big pass play on his first call, the onside kick, and now calling an early timeout here. Shows how important each coach feels getting team confidence established early on, John, and trying to establish the tempo of this ball game is. Uh, North Quincy leading 7-6 to six with 10.30 to go here in the second quarter. Uh, and what has been a very interesting back-and-forth ball game early on, John. Quincy is the home team here today, and they are on uh, the near sidelines to us where the press booth is. North Quincy on the far sideline um, and occupying that sideline in the bench. So we want to thank you all for listening at home. If you are listening to QATV's live coverage of the 79th Annual Thanksgiving Day football game, as Jim mentioned, 10.34 left to go in the second quarter. North on top by a score of 7-6. to six. Jorgensen pitches it to the left. This time Jalen Green gets it over to the left sideline, and he's going to get knocked out of bounds, and it looks like he's going to be about a yard shy of the first down. Needed to get to the Quincy High School 47, and they'll mark him at the 46. Johans Harton on the stop there, John. Quincy ran it to the short side here, and uh, Harton get over, made the tackle, and as you said, it's going to be a third and one. So this is a big play for both teams. North would love to come up with a stop here, and uh, blunt the effect of that turnover. Quincy would like to uh, get the first down and reestablish itself. They had been firing on all cylinders and then were stopped on their second possession. Watch for Jorgensen here. He's checking out the line. You can see he picked up a first down in a similar situation earlier. Tries again. He's going to keep it himself, and he's going to get stuffed right at the line of scrimmage, Jim. And he will not get the first down. Well... The line judge is coming out with what is going to be a fairly interesting. Actually, yeah, he, they're going to get a friendly spot here, Jim. They needed to get, like I said, to the 47-yard line, and initially it did not look like he got it, but they're going to call for a measurement. Yeah, John Mercurio getting over there. We're going to get a great shot of this one. John and Anna down on the field there, and uh, this will be very interesting. This is going to be close. That's the officials bringing out the chains from the far sideline. Stretching it out and uh -oh. looks like going to be just shy. About an inch or two shy of the first down. So that'll bring up fourth down in inches. There is a great, great bit of work by John Mercurio and NL Torrey down on the sidelines. Uh, that's a great shot. Those of you listening at home. Tune in tonight and you'll see it. But uh, it was about three chain links, and John got all three of them there on that shot. And no surprise here. Coach Bill Reardon is going to go for it. As we said, both coaches very anxious to get established here. Reardon is not going to leave anything on the table in this ball game, John. They have a little bit of a difference in coaching style. Coach Connor is a more conservative traditionalist in his approach to the game. Bill Reardon not afraid to take a chance, and the president step up the line here. Let's see what they do on a big fourth down play. All right, fourth and inches for the presidents. They're going to send Reggie Caesar in motion. They give it to him, and he should have enough for the first down, and he does. He'll get up to the 48 yard, excuse me, the 48 yard line, and a first down for Quincy. Yeah, nice job. If you watch the replay, you're going to see just a little simple toss sweep out of a wing formation. They give it to Caesar. Red Raiders are there to make the stop. But uh, Caesar, if Reggie Caesar can't get you a yard, John, then no one can. And uh, Reggie picked up the first down. Clock continues to run. We're ticking up to 9.30 in this second quarter with the Red Raiders leading 7-6. But Quincy on the march at their own 48. All right, flag thrown on the play. Looks like North Quincy will be offside. Caesar with the carry. He runs over to the left side towards the Quincy sideline. And we'll get knocked out of bounds at the North Quincy 45-yard line. And it looks like Quincy will probably deny the penalty because they got seven yards on the carry. We have offsides on the white. Offsides against the Raiders. 
I'll Real quick. You. Oh, sorry, Jim, go right no, ahead. No, after you. Well, I was going to say, uh, for those who, who are listening at home, uh, you mentioned they can watch the game uh, replayed on Quincy Access TV Channel 8 today, Thanksgiving Day at 4 p.m., 8 p.m., and at midnight on Friday, November 25th at noon and 7 p.m., on Saturday, November 26th at noon and 10 p.m., and on Sunday, we have November 27th. On the defense, repeat first down. And on Sunday, November 27th at 8 p.m., uh, log on to QATV.org for all the times. All right, we're getting a timeout here by North Quincy, John. And we talked about this over the course of the years. Coach Connor is sensing that his guys are getting a little tired. The defense has been out there for a while. Uh, Vinny Tran is jumping around. Uh, current Jorgensen is just inside his head, John. If uh, you get the opportunity, folks, when you're watching the ball game, watch number 63 at the top of your screen. Vinny is one of the lead guys on this Red Raider defense. Very, very aggressive. And he is jumping, jumping, jumping on these hard counts of current Jorgensen. Jorgensen has got him three times now with an offside. Um, Coach Connor addressing that, I'm sure, with his defensive huddle. But he's just trying to calm the guys down tell them to follow their assignments and see what they can do here to come up with a stop for the presidents. Presidents are in Red Raider territory at the 47, John, and uh, they're doing what Coach Reardon would hope they do, establishing their tempo, establishing their offensive dominance here, and uh, moving the ball down the field in what has been a very, very strong drive here on the president's third possession. 9.17 left to go in the second quarter. And handoff's going to go up the middle. Looks like there might be a little confusion there for Quincy High School. And they're going to get pushed back toward the 50, but with forward progress will be no gain. So it'll bring up a second down in five. Yeah, this is similar to what happened on the North Quincy fumble. The quarterback turned run one way, and the running back went the other. Um, running back was supposed to be on the other side of current Jorgensen on that play. And uh, unfortunately, he ran into Jorgensen's shoulder. And uh, that miscommunication, Coach Reardon talking to the running back now involved in the play, just to correct it, make sure that he understands what went wrong and how to do it properly next time. Lone back in the backfield for Quincy here on a second and five. Now they're going to pitch it to that lone back. Jalen Green, flag thrown on the play. Green went over to the left side. And again, it'll be a no game, but we'll have to see what the flag is. I'm suspecting there's an issue with a block here. A hold, okay. Uh, that time, Vinny Tran, number 63, the guy we were talking about at the top of your screen, he was the one who came all the way across the field to make the tackle and uh, in an attempt to uh, stop the charging Tran. He got grabbed from behind. So I suspect the, pre the Red Raiders will take this penalty. It's going to push the uh, presidents back from the... Red Raider 42. We have holding on the offense. Holding. Repeat second down. The president. So it'll be a 10 yard penalty against the presidents. Now they'll push them back now into their own territory, uh, back to their own 42 yard line. A few mistakes early on, really hurting the offenses of these teams, John. Let's see, Jorgensen. Talking to Green there. Let's see what happens on this play. All right, Green goes in motion. They're going to fake the snap to him. Jorgensen looking downfield. Has Heffernan down the right sideline. And incomplete. I'm not sure if Heffernan might have lost that in the sunlight, Jim. He was looking right back into it. Yeah, well, also, the Quincy coaching staff not happy because on that play, Antoine Allen, a sophomore defensive back, um, he stepped into the path of the receiver and obstructed him a bit, but he was looking back at the ball the whole time. It appears that's what, if we watch the replay real quickly, um, you're going to see the ball in the air, and you're going to see Allen step into the path of the receiver. That's what's upsetting to the presidents. Back to live action. Our third down and 16 now for Quincy High School. Jorgensen back to pass, looking, looking. Looking down the near sideline, and it is caught by Quincy High School, caught by Viet Doan, 
He crosses the 10 to 5, dives in for a touchdown. There is a flag thrown on the play. We'll have to see if he's coming back. Let's see what the flag is, but uh, we're going to watch this replay, folks. Interesting play. It went through the hands of the North Quincy defender, and Viet Dome was able to bring it in. And it's going to be pass interference on North Quincy, so it'll be a touchdown for the Presidents. All right, so... Well, we ran the replay while we were watching the call on the field there. Why don't we run the replay again so you can hear our expert commentary on it. But, folks, uh, that was a play where you're going to watch Jorgensen put the ball up, and it looked like a bit of a wounded duck there. And what happens is coming over, trying to make the interception was Hart, and the ball went off his hands, and a very alert Yet Doan stayed in the play there, made the reception, and runs it in for the touchdown. Looks like the Presidents will go for two on this play, John, because they've now reestablished their lead at 12-7, having missed the earlier extra point. Um, they're going to go for two here and see if they can't get themselves back on. Reardon calling a timeout on the extra point play. They had a little problem with their personnel again. But interesting broken play but a very alert play by Doan for Quincy, and Quincy takes the lead back at 12-7 here. Back and forth in this first half, John. That was a 58-yard touchdown pass from Jorgensen to Viet Doan. Jorgensen, 126 yards passing here today, very early on in the game. Yeah, and that's two completions, 68 yards and 58 yards, John. But he's also thrown uh, three others. I believe he's two for five. The three others were very catchable balls. You know, he's put them where the receiver could get to them. But uh, the boys weren't able to make the plays because they were difficult plays. We will say that. But uh, Jorgensen having a heck of a game here. And he's under center now on the extra, uh, the point after. All right, full house backfield for the Presidents. North Quincy jumps. Looks like they stay on side. Sees it with it. And he goes in for the two-point conversion. So Quincy will take a 14-7 lead with 7.56 left to go in the second quarter. I'll tell you, Curran Jorgensen is the man here for the Presidents. He is just totally controlling what's going on out on the field there. He's got the Raider defense all off balance. They had jumped off sides, and as they were resetting, you're going to see uh, Jalen, I'd uh, rather uh, Reggie Caesar get in for two. We're going to get out of the sideline. I'm sorry, Noel... Debona has a guest on the sideline. Take it away, Noel. Down here on the field with a North Quincy guy over here. He's, uh, he's in red and black over here. In the 1994 Hall of Fame inductee uh, for the 2011 uh, this year. Uh, congratulations. Um, he's much. also part of the undefeated 11-0 1993 season. Um, unbelievable. Um, how's it feel to be out of school 18, 17 years? I'll tell you, it's a surprise. I still have dreams about certain plays that we played against each other and against other people. And uh, I don't know, after 18 years, it still seems like yesterday, to be honest. With you. Great, great. You know, I remember you guys making the playoffs and going into the Super Bowl and playing against the Arlington Spybonders, number 88, a tight end screen for a touchdown down the left sideline. Does, how does that feel? <laughs> it still feels good. People remember me just by my number sometimes. And the quarterback, Liam Higgins, who threw it. We were third, I think, in the state championship history now for a 73-yard touchdown. Well-deserved Hall of Fame inductee. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Noel. Quincy kicks it off, bounces at the 10-yard line. Marquise fields it at the 10. And he'll get pushed out of bounds at the 15. And that's where North Quincy will take over. He was pushed up by Jaquan Harris. Okay, so big shift in momentum in this ball game, John. Quincy leading 14-7 with 7.50 to go. And the Red Raider offense comes out on the field with a big challenge ahead of it. They need to reestablish things from the North Quincy perspective here. Uh, they've had success with their ground game. A couple of balky center snaps on the last possession for North Quincy. Let's see if they haven't corrected things. Andrew Minton on the center with a split backfield. All right, so Quincy High School makes North Quincy pay in the fumble. And Walter Hannon, he's going to get the carry now. Up the middle, goes to the right, will cross the 20 and get up to the 22-yard line. Well, as we said about Coach Connor, he's a real traditionalist. He plays a 
conservative game of football, and uh, his response to what's going on out there is to send Walter Hand and his fullback up inside the tackle and try to smash right back at Quincy. You can tell that the goal of North Quincy is to put a nice prolonged drive on here. Let's see how the president defense reacts. All right, again, Hannon over the middle, has the space, crossing now the 35-yard line, up the middle, gets across the 40, and brought down by Reggie Caesar at the North Quincy 43-yard line. Great run there by Walter Hannon. I'll tell you, Walter Hannon, two carries, 27 yards. Watch this replay, and North Quincy is suddenly out of a hole and in nice field position. Watch Hannon. Now watch, folks, watch him cover up the ball when he feels the pressure from behind. He does a great job as Reggie Caesar tackles it from behind of covering up the ball, protecting it. Good job by Hannon. Antoine Allen with a carry now. First and 10 for North Quincy. And he's going to get knocked out of bounds at the 49-yard line on North Quincy's side of the field. So 6.36 left to go here in the second quarter. North Quincy driving. Quincy on top, 14-7. To nice substitution by Coach Connor. A nice play call as well. Antoine Allen is the X-factor in this game, John. He's an exciting, dynamic ball player. They're going to pop him in the backfield occasionally, and I think Antoine can be a difference maker. Hannon again on the carry over the right side. will cross the 50-yard line and get up to the Quincy High School 46-yard line, and it looks like it should be enough for a first down, and it is. Quincy defense has to react here, John. The Red Raiders coming right at them, running the ball inside running successfully, and the Presidents have to make an adjustment here. North Quincy at the 46 of the Presidents, and on the move with 5.50 to go. Quincy 14, North Quincy 7, second quarter, Thanksgiving Day. Marquise Chase with a carry to the left side, but he's met immediately at the line of scrimmage by several Quincy Presidents. There you go. That's what you want to see if you're a President. Number one, Jalen Green in on the tackle. Number 76, Jim Askins getting down the line. He's only a sophomore, but he's one of the big guys, and he was down there as well. He stacked up the offensive lineman and opened things up for Green to make the pop. So good job by the president defense of reacting here. They come up with a stop at second and ten for the Red Raiders. All right, Allen goes wide right. Mitten hands it off again to Hannon right up the middle, and he's going to get to the 40-yard line for a gain of six. So bring up second down and four for North Quincy at the Quincy High School 40-yard line. I'll tell you, Walter Hannon is built a little bit like a bowling ball. He's powerful, he's strong, and he can run as well. He's got great speed. He fired right up to the right of his left guard, meaning he was right in the heart of the president defense. And uh, you see big number 64 for North Quincy getting up and limping a bit. I don't know if we have him... One of the frustrating things about dealing with North is their roster never matches the uniforms on Thanksgiving Day, but the right tackle for North Quincy. We'll take a look after about that, but uh, he's Jeff Quincy getting a timeout here. The right tackle for North Quincy doing a great job of pulling on that play and leading hand and through the hall. He got up limping, and uh, we'll hope that he's okay. Defensive coordinator Kevin Carey ran over to the sideline official to call a timeout before that last play was snapped. He saw something and immediately went over to talk to Jaquan Harris, and Harris relayed that information back to the huddle. So Quincy calls their third timeout of the half. They have two left. North Quincy has four timeouts remaining here in the first half. Again, 423 left to go in the half. Presidents 14, the Raiders 7. Third down and four for the Red Raiders. Ball at the Quincy High School 40-yard line. Chase gets the carry. He's fighting his way for the first down, and he's going to be right at the first down marker. We'll see where they spot the ball. Need to get to the Quincy 36. Yeah, he stopped short. They're going to put him at about the 37 and a half. So it's uh, third and one, and uh, no question here. North Quincy's going to go for it. Clock ticking down. We're under four minutes. Red Raiders on the president's side of the field. This is an important possession for them, John, and what has been, as we expected, an exciting ball game. Both teams really going at each other, evenly matched, and this has been a uh, fun game to watch so far. All right, fourth down and one for the Red Raiders. 
I formation, hand on the down back, chase the tailback. Minton hands it off to Marquise Chase over the right side. He crossed the 40, this should be the 35, and he'll get the first down and more. Still carrying three presidents, now one. A great run by Marquise Chase. He carried a couple of presidents for about 10 yards, Jim. Watch this replay and watch Danilo Lopes for Quincy. There you see Danilo, number 22. He's going to get in and grab Chase. Here he comes. He doesn't give up on the play. He wraps him up just inside the 30 and hangs on for dear life as Chase runs him down inside the 20. Down to the 15-yard line. Great individual effort. Carry Lopes for 15 yards right there. Chase again on the carry. First and 10 for North Quincy. Ball is at the 15-yard line. Chase runs up the middle for a gain of 8 up to the 7-yard line. North Quincy couldn't be any happier with this drive, and Bill Reardon and the Quincy presidents could not be any more disappointed. Reardon getting a timeout right now. Uh, Quincy had just done a terrific job of reasserting control in this ball game. And uh, a couple of big plays, a couple of runs up inside, and the president defense is back on its heels. They're facing a second and two with the ball on the seven-yard line. North Quincy would love to run this clock down here. They'd love to get into the end zone, John, and tie the ball game. It almost looks like whoever has the ball last here is going to be the team that's going to have the edge because both offenses have been very comfortable out on the field here. They've been stopped by turnovers, but uh, with the type of coaching that we have at both high schools, uh, the little mistakes that we saw early on have been corrected. And uh, this Red Raider offense is just mowing down the field here, John. 2.44 left to go here in the second quarter. Quincy on top, 14-7, but North is driving, and they are at the President's seven-yard line. It'll be second down and two when we come back from the timeout. John, during the timeout, we may mention, we got a note here, and I'm happy to bring this up. Um, Pat Watkins, a guy who was a 2009 graduate of North Quincy High, um, we remember Patrick because we talked about him a lot. He was a football player and a heck of a football player for North Quincy High. Um, he is leaving tomorrow, actually, for Afghanistan. He's a member of the United States Marine Corps. He's heading over to Afghanistan tomorrow. And uh, we'll talk about Patrick again in a moment as Andrew Minton comes out under center. Second down and two. Chase with a carry. Bounces outside to the right and fumbles. Fumble. Let's see. Fumble. North Quincy was able to recover. Andrew Minton, a great job to get it. Marquise Chase looked like he was diving in for the touchdown. And as he was doing that, ball came out of his body, got knocked out, and Minton's going to carry it. And it will be all the way back at the 11-yard line. Let's see what uh, the umpire says. Or actually, it's a back judge. He had dropped... He uh, is going to talk to the referee. I don't know if Chase's knee was down. Nope, they're going to they're going to call the fumble here. If you watch the replay, Chase is just about to go in the end zone. You're going to see the ball come flying in the air. Great hit here. No, he actually just kind of he was moving the ball to avoid the hit. The ball slipped out. And watch an alert Andrew Minton get over here. You see Walter Hannon as well. Minton covers the ball at the eight. Big turn over here. Third and four for the Red Raiders, John. Viet Dome was also in there. Tried to knock that ball loose. Marquise Chase with a carry over to the left side. He's going to get up to the six-yard line. Will be shy of the first down. So that'll bring up fourth down and one for the Red Raiders. President down on the field. Looks like he might be injured. No, he's getting right up. It's uh, oh, a couple of guys tangled up there is what it was. So um, clock continues to run. We're at 122. Fourth down and one. This is a big play, John. If the president has come up with a stop here, that would be huge as they go to the locker room. If the Red Raiders can get either the first down or keep moving as they have successfully, uh, that would be big. It would bring the game back to, uh, you know, where we were earlier. Tie ball game. Two exciting, evenly matched teams. So let's see what happens here. And as, they, uh, as we go to a timeout, let me just finish mentioning, Pat Watkins, uh, 2009 graduate, is, uh, he'll be, he was on a team with Dan Jackson. You remember Dan Jackson, I'm sure. I used to put the Dan Jackson I said Jackson you jinxed him all the time. Yes. And Danny is another guy who, uh, Marine Corps, uh, he's a member of the Marines. He's been over to Afghanistan once. 
and come back. Uh, Pat Watkins is going to deploy tomorrow. Uh, we certainly thank him for his service. We wish him well. The way the Marine Corps works, they send young men over for six months, exactly, because these guys are really put under a lot of pressure. They're out on the front line, and so uh, Patrick's going to be over there probably till about May of next year. Uh, we certainly wish you well, Patrick, and hope you come back safely. And um, we thank him for the service. Thank the others, as we said, his teammate, Danny Jackson, another guy in the Marine Corps. There are several other names from Quincy of young men who are currently serving their country, and we thank them and remember them today. All right, fourth and one for North Quincy at the six-yard line. Chase is going to get it, and he'll have the first down. He got inside the five-yard line up to the three, it looks like. So that will be enough to move the chains with 101 left to go in the half. Yep. They're going to set the... Uh Set the first down marker, and then the clock should start. So first and goal for North at the President's three-yard line. Under a minute now left to go. High formation for North Quincy. They give it to Marquise Chase over the right sideline. He cuts it back up in, and touchdown North Quincy. Marquise Chase punches it in. Boy, I'll tell you what. He took a heck of a pop from Caesar, and uh, he went in standing up. A terrific drive by the Red Raiders. Watch this replay, folks. And watch these two guys just bang each other. Coming right at you. John Mercurio in the end zone with a great camera shot. Watch. There's one hit. He cuts inside of that. Now watch number seven come in. There is a collision. And Chase just takes it right on the chin. Gives a little look back at uh, Reggie Caesar. And uh, the Red Raiders with a very determined drive down the field. Punch the ball in, and here's a big point after. Iris Baker to kick it for North Quincy. Good snap, good hole, kick is up, and it is good. Splits the uprights. So with 45 seconds left to go in the first half, we are tied at 14, Jim. What a game so far. Yeah, it's what we expected. We said two evenly matched teams with some exciting ball players, and they are really doing a terrific job here today love to get a crowd shot if i don't know if peter darty can do a little loop around the field but we have a terrific turnout here today john there's a shot from our 20-yard camera of the home side of the field quincy's home and they are on in the uh the stands on the hancock street side and over on the far side of the field there's a shot of some of the folks in the end zone area uh, it's a terrific turnout here. One of the best in memory, recent memory, John. I want to remind all of our viewers, log on to QATV's website at www.qatv.org for more information about when this game will replay on Quincy Access TV. And in case you're listening at home right now, you can log on to our website so you can see it and all the action later on today on Quincy Access TV Channel 8. All right, Baker getting ready to kick off for North Quincy. Again, 45 seconds left to go. We are tied at 14. Marquise Chase is 105 yards rushing here today, Jim, and two touchdowns. Baker kicks it off. It's going to be fielded by Quincy High School's Jaquan Harris at his own six-yard line. Crosses the 20, up the middle of the field, and will get brought down. Ball's loose on the ground. No, they're going to say he was down. Okay. You're correct. Ball referee, did come loose. But referee was right there on top yeah, of it. Yeah. I'll tell you what, the Red Raiders special team play has been phenomenal. Because when you say, uh, when you see, was that Green or uh, Harris? Uh, Jaquan Harris. When you see a guy like Harris, or if you saw Jalen Green, with that type of open field starting to uh, open up, um, it was very exciting looking at uh, the Green in front of him. And suddenly it just closes right down. Red Raiders special teams have done a terrific job. I think we've got a problem here. Again, the umpire throwing the flag. There are 12 Red Raiders on the field. A, little a dead ball here. foul. 12 men on the field. White. Illegal Still first down. That's one way to make certain that Quincy doesn't do anything in this final 35 seconds, John. <laughs> North Quincy getting as many bodies out there as they can. It turned out that... Uh, 
what they were doing is they have four linebackers and four defensive backs out there. Well, someone didn't tell one of the linemen it was supposed to be off the field there. They're going to go with three down linemen. They've got four linebackers about five yards back, and then their four defensive backs are about ten yards back from there. Red Raiders want to do a little bend, don't break type defense, and make sure that Quincy, with their gunslinger head coach, Bill Reardon, not afraid to call anything on the big play. Reggie sees with a carry on the left side. Nice tackle there by North Quincy. Coming Vinnie up for him is Vinny Tran. Tran is really a dynamic football player. We've been focusing on the running backs and everything, John. But Vinny Tran, number 63, he's only a sophomore. And he's out there playing like a veteran. He's all over the field. Very exciting guy. We talked about Caesar when he was a sophomore in, with reverential terms. And you, you knew that he was going to be an exciting guy. Well, this young man, Vinny Tran, he played last year as a freshman. Now as a sophomore, he's one of the leaders on this defense all over the field, doing a terrific job. And uh, he made the tackle on Caesar. So the presidents are at the 34. We're at a 14-14 tie with 28 ticks left in this second quarter. First and 10 for the presidents at their own 34-yard line. High formation, Caesar gets the carry. If he has one tackle, cuts up the middle now, coming back towards the near sideline, crosses the 50-yard line, the 45-40, and knocked out of bounds. Let's see, they spot the ball at the 37 of North Quincy. Caesar gets out of bounds. North Quincy High School has no timeouts left. Top Tierney knocked him out of bounds. If you watch the replay, watch Caesar, and he just will not give up on this play. Starts at his 34. And watch this, he sees some green outside, makes the cut. This is what he couldn't do earlier because of the ankle injury. That's a 27 yard run there for uh, Reggie Caesar. Terrific, terrific work by Reggie and the presidents at the red rate of 37 with 18 seconds to go. And with that run, Jim, Caesar goes over 2,000 yards rushing in his career at Quincy High School. So congratulations to Reggie Caesar. A great accomplishment on that run. So 18 seconds left to go in the half. The ball is now at the Red Rays 37-yard line. We are tied at 14. Guys, are going to be running off in a minute, so make sure you stay out of the way. That was just what Reggie sees over 2,000 yards in his high school career here. And he also went to Quincy High School, correct me? Martin Dunham, our statistician, went over and told Jeff Hennessy, who uh, does the announcing here at Veterans Stadium, uh, that Reggie Caesar has just gone over 2,000 yards. Jeff announced that and had a big round of applause at Veterans Stadium. Well deserved for Reggie Caesar. Yeah, like you mentioned, Jim, there's a great crowd here today, one of the better crowds we've seen in the last 10 years. And it's been a great day for it, which is a big reason. All right, Jorgensen back to pass, looking down the far sideline, and it's complete to Jaquan Harris. And Harris will run out of bounds. He gets the first down, but he gets out of bounds, more important. Yeah, out of bounds is the key. And uh, one of the interesting X factors here is Jorgensen's ability to go to the air here, John. Uh, normally, you're under 10 seconds now with a marquee guy like Richie Caesar and a ground attack like the presidents have. You'd love to be able to take advantage of that, but with only 10 seconds, President's looking to make something happen here. They're going to have to do it by going to the air. They brought Caesar out. He's on the sideline. And Curran Jorgensen has got two guys in the backfield with him who are receiver types, Jalen Green and Jack Juan Harris. All right, from the shotgun, Jorgensen looking to his left side, and it is ball in the air, and it's complete. <laughs> well, actually, we'll see if it's complete or not. Ah, yes, it is complete. Viet Doan has it. Quince is going to run up to the line. Yeah, actually, there's no time left on the clock. Doan again. Viet Doan staying in the play, doing a remarkable job. That was the exact same type of play that we saw earlier. So I'm not too sure. The, the clock is showing no time, but the officials are deciding if there is time or not. Quincy's hoping there is so they can spike the ball. Referee out on the field. Let's see what he says. Good. First down was made. Clock stops by rule. Put two seconds on the clock. Two seconds on the clock. 
We're just so going to start on my whistle. So you're going to say two seconds on the clock. So Quincy will need to spike it immediately, and they'll have one shot at the end zone. Either that or possibly run the play, John. Let's see what they do. All right, well, North Quincy's going to call a timeout so they can regroup. But a huge play there. Alex Jorgensen, uh, excuse me, Curran Jorgensen, throws the ball downfield. It's complete, complete to Viet Doan. And the ball is now at the North Quincy 8-yard line. Are uh, they bringing a field goal unit out? Well, let's take a look at the replay, Jim, while we uh, hammer these things out real quick. You can see Jorgensen in the shotgun there looking downfield. Fires into a group of players. And he gets tipped by several players. And, and Viet Doan again. dives towards it and makes the catch. All right, for the field goal, Quincy comes up. And it is... Good. Jalen Green kicks the field goal. And it looked like it was a 23-yard field goal. Goes through the uprights, and Quincy takes a 17-14 lead as we go to the half. I'll tell you, what a ball game here, John. Very exciting. Coach Connor and his coaching staff not at all happy about that because they felt that the clock had run out. Uh, but you got to give credit to the Quincy presidents. North called a timeout to set up defensively, and when they did, Coach Reardon, reacting quickly, got Jalen Green and the field goal crew out on the field. They took advantage of the timeout to get set up. We're going to get onto the field. Noel DeBona has Coach Connor, and uh, we'll get a little uh, quick interview with the coach. Down in the field, Coach Connor, Marquise Chase, first half. 100, over 100 yards, really pounding the football running game. Just right now, you know, no time, maybe two seconds left to call a quick timeout. Um, they kick the field goal. 17-14 here at halftime. Any, any delightful, you know, what's going on? Yeah, we got to stop beating ourselves. I mean, we're, you know, we're tipping balls. They're catching them. It's just a series of, you know, misfortune events right now that we got to put an end to. Uh, you know, missed coverage on the you know, first touchdown and then a tip ball for a touchdown and then, um, you know, and, and uh, twice and ended up being a, you know, field goal at the end. So, you know, uh, you know, we got to just start making plays. They got there right now. They have playmakers, and uh, and we and we're not having them right now. We got some, you know, we got some drives together, and that's all. That's positive, but we got to find a way to stop make, giving up big plays. Yeah, we, you got real lucky here. Uh, Marquis Chase had a fumble right by the goal line, and and, and, and Andrew Mitten, ta you know, recovered it. Then you went in and scored your touchdowns. That could have been a big disappointment. Now, it's 17-14. Any, any second half adjustments, anything going on? No, offensively, no. Offensively, we're, we're fine. We're moving the ball. We, we fumbled once on a, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, went the wrong way on a play uh, in a fumble. Um, but we're moving the ball well. I mean, we've only had the ball three times. I think and we scored twice and uh, fumbled, yeah, yeah. moved the ball down and fumbled. So I think offensively, we're fine. We just got to figure out a way to stop, um, you know, uh, giving up the big, you know, big, big plays on, off, on defense. Plays. Okay, well, thank you very much, thank Coach Connor. Much. Good luck in the second half. Hey. Thanks. Oh. All right, thanks, Noel, for that uh, report down on the field. We appreciate it. So, again, the last second field goal for Quincy as time expires, and they take a 17-14 lead as we go into halftime. Jim, we're going to take a quick timeout, and we'll be back in just a moment with second-half coverage of the 79th annual Thanksgiving football game here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. Welcome back, everyone. We're at the half. The Quincy Presidents lead the North Quincy Raiders by a score of 17 to 14. Some halftime stats for you, courtesy of Martin Dumb and Marquise Chase. 15 carries for 108 yards with two touchdowns. Walter Hannon, he has three rushes for 33 yards. Vinny Trent has six tackles. Four of them have been solo. Johannes Harton has five tackles for North Quincy. For Quincy High School, uh, Kevin Jorgensen, the quarterback, four or seven passing for 155 yards, two touchdowns. Reggie Caesar. Eight rushes for 61 yards. The Manila Lopes having a great game on the defensive side of the ball. 13 tackles, eight solo. And Jackson Lamb has six tackles. Total time of possession, Quincy High School 10:31 and North Quincy 11:29. Total yards for Quincy High School 221. For North Quincy 140. No yards through the air for North Quincy. 155 for Quincy High School. One turnover for North Quincy, which led to a Quincy touchdown. 
Yeah, it's uh, been interesting. Uh, Coach Connor, a little frustration at halftime, John, because he felt like his team was doing what it could do out there when it had the ball, but that they would make mistakes, shoot themselves in the foot. From the president perspective, they have done a terrific job of taking advantage of whatever opportunities they've had and making uh, North pay for its mistakes. We're going to talk to Bill Reardon now, Noel DeBoner on the sideline. Down here with uh, Quincy head coach uh, Bill Reardon. Uh, you're coming out of the, into the second half here. North Quincy's getting the ball first. He had great passing plays in the first half, got two touchdowns and a quick field goal right at the end. Uh, any adjustments for the second half? Um, well, we gotta we gotta figure some things out defensively. I mean, we know Marquise is a good football player, but we can't let him be that good. We gotta start making tackles and containing him. Do um, you think they're gonna pass the ball? You think there's anything uh, you know outside? You know, I, maybe at some point they would. Um, I, but if, I mean, Marquise, if I had that horse, I'd keep giving it to him too. <laughs> Stuff the middle. Back up to you. Thank you. Hey, thank you. All right, thanks a lot, Noel and Coach Reed, and as well, both teams, or the captains, excuse me, are out on the field. North Quincy is going to defend the south end zone, Quincy the north end zone. And as Noel said, North will get the ball to start the second half. Yeah, and it'll be uh, an interesting possession for North Quincy. I suspect, John, they're going to want to come right out and establish themselves, reestablish that running game, and let's see what adjustments the president's made at halftime. Uh, you could hear the frustration in Coach Reardon's voice. He's saying... We recognize Marquise Chase, a good ball player, but uh, we can match him if we make our play. So we'll see how the Quincy linebackers in particular make adjustments here to shoot the gaps that the North Quincy offensive line has been establishing. It's 17-14 as we start the second half here. It's cooled off a bit. There's been a steady wind coming out of the North, John. And uh, when the wind comes from that direction, you know, it's always going to be cold air. And uh, it's been kind of a, a cool, you know, pre-winter day here at Quincy, uh, in Quincy. And uh, the wind has not been a factor, certainly, but it has kept the temperature down. And uh, we'll see how that affects play as the game goes on. We want to remind all of our viewers, log on to Quincy Access TV's website at www.qatv.org for all the information when you can catch this game replayed on Quincy Access TV Channel 8. So again, log on, qatv.org. Jalen Green going to be kicking off, John. And uh, back deep, we have uh, Chase and Hannon for the Red Raiders. All right, Jalen Green kicks it off, short kick, and is fielded and downed by North Quincy. Cole Barrett is going to jump on it at the North Quincy 30-yard line, and that's where the Red Rays will start this second half. Yeah, smart of Cole there. Not taking any chances. He made sure that he covered the ball. So the Red Raiders start with decent field position at the 34-yard line, 35, uh, I beg your pardon, the 30-yard line. They're going to start at the 30. Red Raiders ready to go. They come out with the I formation. Hannon and Chase behind quarterback Andrew Minton. Chase going to get the ball. He breaks free for the first carry. Crosses the 40-yard line. Get up to the 45. A gain of 15 for Marquise Chase. Make it 16. He gets up to the 46. Big gain on first down for North Quincy. Running right at the gut of the president defense. That's the Red Raiders uh, locker room adjustment. Watch the replay here. And you're going to see Chase just hit a hole inside his right tackle. Reggie Caesar comes across to make the tackle. Caesar has been keying on Chase defensively and has done a terrific job. He's got a couple of big hits in on him, John. So first and 10 now for North Quincy. They're going to fake it. They go to Antoine Allen. He cuts it back up the middle, across the 50-yard line, not over to the right sideline, across the 30-yard line, still on his feet, and brought down by number 20, Viet Doan. But deep into Quincy territory goes North Quincy. First down and 10 from the Quincy 22. Oh, great play. Watch this replay. They fake it to Hannon. Give it to Allen. Great blocking out there. And Watch Allen cut this ball back. Terrific job by Antoine Allen. He's an exciting ball player, only a sophomore. You see him getting downfield there, tackled from behind. 
And look who's in blocking, Marquise Chase, trying to get downfield, and here's Chase on the carry. All right, Chase goes over to the right side, and he'll get a gain of, let's see where they mark it. Mark it at the 16-yard line, so gain of six on first down. Wow, North Quincy just coming out, trying to take it right at the Presidents. Presidents on their heels, trying to adjust here. It's second and four for the Red Raiders on the Quincy 16-yard line. Like that, John. Clock running. We're a minute 40 into this third quarter, and the Red Raiders have just mowed down the field here. Second down and four. Ball at the 16-yard line. Chase again with the carry over the right side, and this time he's met by a number of players, and Andrew Mitten went diving in to try to push the pile forward. Let's see, they're going to spot the ball at the, make it the 14-yard line. Great job by the president defense of stepping up. Watch the replay here. You're going to see the left side of the president defense stack up Chase and stop him this time. Great job. You see number 22 for the presidents coming in to hit the pile, Danilo Lopes. And we saw number 59, Peter Cedroni, in there on the stop. So good job by the presidents of stacking up. That's what they need to do here. It's a third down and one. Big play for both teams here as we come out in an exciting start to the third quarter. Hand off right up the middle to, let's see, I thought it was Chase, Hannon. but it's not Hannon, excuse me, on the carry. And he'll get inside the 10-yard line for the first down, first and goal for North. Hannon was the lone guy in the backfield that time, and I'll tell you what, Coach Connor has got his boys fired up. He, he's brought them out here, and they are just smashing it inside the tackles at the president's yard. So we'll see if Quincy can react here. It's a first and goal on the 10 for the Red Raiders. Two men in the backfield are handed in Marquis Chase behind Andrew Mitten. They're going to give it to Hannon over to the right side. He pushes the pile forward. And he's going to get up to the six-yard line. So he's second and goal from the six for the Red Raiders. Nice job by the left side of the president defense. As we mentioned, they have to step up and make some plays here. And number 45, Matt Hines, only a sophomore. Matt got in there, plugged the gap, made the hit, and a big stop on Walter Hannon. Going to be second and six after a pickup of four. Clock running. Red Raiders come out and establish themselves. They've got a nice little four-minute drive going on here, John. 7.19 left to go in the third quarter. Hannon over to the right side, and touchdown, North Quincy. Walter Hannon goes in from six yards out, and North Quincy comes back and takes the lead with 7.12 left to go here in the third quarter. Yeah, if you watch the replay, you're going to see Hannon make a great cut. He's going to take it outside, and he's going to go in untouched. There he goes, and that's what we talked about, John. Walter Hannon is a fire plug, and he can run inside with terrific power. But he can also, he's got speed, and he broke that one outside with a nice deft cut and uh, ran it in untouched for the touchdown. So the Red Raiders do exactly what they wanted to do coming out of the locker room. Aris Bagger going to attempt the point after here. Each of these are big here, John, in this ball game. All right, good snap, good hole, kick is up, and it is good. He again splits the upright, so North Quincy comes right back, Jim, to start the second half, and they now have a 21-17 lead over the Presidents. Yeah, terrific drive, just short of four minutes. You mentioned time of possession favored the Red Raiders in the first half. That was because of that final long drive where they held the ball for a while. Uh, North Quincy has stuck to the ground exclusively. Quincy has put the ball in the air a few times. Curran Jorgensen very successfully getting the ball out there. A couple of receptions for 116 yards. Those are big numbers. Uh, but the Red Raiders sticking to the ground game, and that's why they have uh, controlled time of possession. And they do so here, coming out of the locker room with a great drive just short of four minutes and uh, right down the field to retake the lead here in a back-and-forth Thanksgiving Day football game, John. 21-17 Raiders. All right, as you said, it has been a back-and-forth, and it's been one of the most exciting football games on Thanksgiving we've had in quite a number of years. Uh, for the past about 10 years, Jim, 
Uh, the losing team has scored either seven or zero points. Uh, so this is going to be not one of those games. Good to see a lot of scoring here on Thanksgiving Day game. Sun could be a factor on this kickoff. It is in the eyes of the president's receivers. Well. And the ball is <laughs> going to go out of bounds, so it won't be too much of a factor on that one, Jim. Not a factor on that kick. Jaquan Harris, number three for the Presidents, came up to make sure it was going to go out of bounds and went out at the 20. I'll tell you what, with the sun where it is today, it's coming around the south side of the field. You look at the shadows on the field there, and you can see what I'm talking about, the shadow off the official. We have procedure on the kicking team. Quincy's ball, first and 10 at the 30-yard line. The ball is essentially right, uh, the sun I should say, is essentially right over the bus barn to our south here, the MBTA bus barn. And uh, it's low on the horizon. We're heading toward December 21, the equinox. So it's in the eyes of the ball players. And uh, on that kickoff, it was not a factor, although it could have been. We'll see how it influences thing in the, things in this second half, John. Karen Jorgensen under center, I formation. He's going to hand out to Reggie Caesar. He's hit in the oh, backfield and brought boy. down immediately by North Quincy. Let's see who it was Number that made the tackle. For the Red Raiders. Number 50 is Don Sharp, a sophomore. Although the numbers are tough for the Red Raiders this year, they've got a big sophomore group and junior group, and that was one of them. Don Sharp, a great hit, great penetration. He's uh, one of the down linemen. And he was able to find a seam there and hit Caesar early on. So terrific job by Sharp. Great stop. Second and 12 for the Presidents. Caesar low man in the backfield. They're going to pitch it to him. He comes towards the near sideline, cuts it back up into the middle, and is brought down immediately there at the 28-yard line, met by, again, three North Quincy uh, defenders. Again, Sharp with a penetration there. He turned Caesar inside. That's two great snaps for Don Sharp there. He did a terrific job. Turned Caesar inside. Linebackers made the tackle. And uh, now the president's backed up on a big third down play here, John. It's third and nine from the 30. Nice play by Lucas Yanovich, number 58 for North Quincy also. The left defensive end. Caesar was trying to get outside. Yanovich pushed him back in as well to help his defenders make the hit. All right, North Quincy's going to jump off sides. Flag is thrown. Jalen Green gets the carry. Gets across the 35 and up to the 36 where he's knocked out of bounds. Yeah, they're going to get five yards for free on this one. And uh, they're going to look at a third and six here. Yep, offsides, Red Raiders. They'll take it, I'm sure. And they're going to have another shot at a first down. So the Red Raiders continue to shoot themselves in the foot here. Coach Connor at halftime talked about correcting mistakes. And uh, we have offsides on the defense. Repeat third down. This is a reflection on Curran Jorgensen in some respects, who's done a terrific job with his hard counts, John. Since the first play of the game, Jorgensen has done a nice job with his cadence. And North Quincy has jumped offside several times here tonight, Jim. Uh, at least four times there have been offsides penalties on North Quincy. Yeah, he's kept uh, the Red Raiders off balance, and uh, that's, I believe, the fourth time now that the presidents have picked up five yards for free. So it's third down and six for Quincy High School. They're at their own 34-yard line. Need to get to the 40 to move the chains. Jorgensen pitches it to the right. Jalen Green with a carry, crosses the 35-yard line, and he's brought down immediately there by North Quincy. Nice hit. So bring up a fourth down and long, and they're going to say ball's loose. And North Quincy has recovered. All right, let's take a look at a replay here. If we have one, Jalen Green getting up, and he's hurt. He really got popped there, John. Ball came loose. Watch the replay here, folks. And let's watch the end of the play. It's a little toss sweep. Green trying to get outside. And there he sees he's not going to have room. He really gets popped. And it looks like a great strip by number 30 for the Red Raiders. In there on the tackle, Joey Lawler. Big turn over there. Joey, one of the seniors on this team. He got in there, made the stop, and the strip. Red Raiders covered, and they have great field position here. They're going to be first and 10 from the 36-yard line. Big turn of events here coming out of the locker room, John. 
5.20 left to go in the third quarter. Marquise Chase with the carry on first down for North Quincy. He's met at the line of scrimmage. They're going to say no. He got a gain of one on the play up to the 35-yard line where he was brought down there by Quincy High School. Leading the charge was Keenan Daniels, one of the senior captains for the Presidents. Yeah, and Chase is not getting up here. He's hurt. Um, let's see what, what the story is. Maybe get the wind knocked out of him. But uh, the President defensive line reacting here very well. They made the stop, and uh, Chase has had a problem with his shoulders here. They're checking his leg out. It could be, well, we won't speculate. But in any event, a good job by the president defensive line there, John, reacting to make the stop. The defense has to react here. This is a critical possession here as the Red Raiders have come out of the locker room, fired up. They went right downfield for a touchdown to retake the lead with a four-minute drive, force a turnover on the president's first possession of the second half, and now the Red Raiders are trying to reestablish that offensive flow. Presidents respond early very well, and uh, it looks like they're dealing with a cramping issue with Chase. We'll see. But they're going to have to take Marquis Chase off the field for this play. We'll see how he does, and we'll see how the Red Raiders react to his absence. All right, so Marquis Chase gets up, and looks like he's going to walk off the field. So hopefully he's okay and can come back. We know uh, injuries have been a problem for both teams, um, especially on Quincy's side. They, all three of their running backs have been hurt at some point this season. Chase has been knocked up as well. So hopefully he's okay. Looks like he's running off a little limping, but it should be okay. Yeah, they're bringing in number three, Cole Barrett, for this possession. Walter Hannon's still in the backfield. I don't know if Walter's been off the field at all, John. It's a split backfield with uh, Hannon and Barrett. All right, second down in nine. Hannon gets the carry right up the middle. He's going to get a gain of three or four yards before he is met and stopped by Peter Cedroni. Cedroni, a nice stop there to hold Hannon. A gain of two on the play up to the president's 33-yard line. Great job by the presidents. The defense is reacting. This is what they needed to do. Uh, this is an important third down play now. They've got to make three plays here. They've made two. Uh, Chase coming back out, and the Red Raiders are going to get a timeout here. With 4.22 to go in the third quarter, Coach Connor realizing how important this possession is, looking to give uh, Marquise Chase a little longer to recover. And uh, looking to set up a play on what is a big third down, John. It'll be third down and eight, Jim, at the 33-yard line for North Quincy. 4.22 left to go here in the third quarter. North Quincy on top of the Presidents by a score of 21-17. to It's been an exciting ball game here at the stadium all game long. North Quincy started the second half very quick, coming out and getting a six-yard touchdown run from Walter Hannon to put them up 21-17. to Quincy got the ball back, and they fumbled on their own 36-yard line, North Quincy was able to recover, and now we hear three plays later, excuse me, two plays later, third and eight for the Red Raiders. Yeah, the uh, teams are coming out of the timeout now. It's 21-17, as you said, 4.22 to go. We've got folks at home listening to our audio. Well, a video, what time's the first replay today, John? On Thanksgiving Day, 4 p.m., 8 p.m., and noon. And if you're looking for more times, you can log on to, I'm sorry, at midnight, at midnight. Right, there you go. And you can log on to QATV.org for all the times. I, I thought I said something wrong when you gave me that weird look as, what are you talking about, John? <laughs> yeah, well, that's a typical look you get from me, right? Yeah. But, yeah, 4, 8, and noon, I thought you just were checking to see whether I was paying attention. And the wrong 12. I'm on, on the edge of my seat with every word from John Clary, <laughs> folks, as you should be. All right, Minton, look like he's going to pass, get flushed out of the pocket. Still looking, he's going to run now, gets up to the 30-yard line, and he is knocked down out of bounds. Let's see where they spot the ball. He is going to be shy of the first down. Needs to get to the President's 26, and they're going to say he got to the President's 29. So we're bringing up fourth down and three. He's getting up awfully slowly. Something happened to his right hand on that play. I'll tell you, if you watch the replay... I don't like the way his right hand's looking there. Watch uh, Minton. 
And uh, what's happening here is he's about to get blasted. Let's see what happens. Does he land in his... No, he doesn't land on his right side. It's apparently how he was hit. It might have been when he got hit. It might have, someone's helmet might have caught his hand, it looked like. Uh, it happened kind of quick on the replay there, but it looked like he might have got hit in, the, uh, in his hand with a helmet. I don't know. He reacted almost immediately with it. And uh, so that's unfortunate, the way Minton's been play calling. But I'll tell you what, we talked about this earlier. Um, Joe Brown, a senior, number 16, had, uh, he started the year at quarterback, a uh, very talented athlete. Um, he stepped aside when Minton was ready. He's been playing uh, a wide-out position. He's been doing whatever it is the coaching staff needs from him, and uh, he'll be ready to step in. Whereas the loss of a quarterback on Thanksgiving Day could be a really critical blow, North Quincy has the luxury of an experienced senior, Joe Brown, ready to step in, and he does. Let's see. Let's hope that Minton, as he heads off the field, is okay. There you see Coach Connor with Joe Brown. They're going to go for it on fourth down, John. It's fourth and uh, about three for first down. Let's see what happens. They've got Chase out there now rested, and they've got Walter Hannon ready to go. So we're going to expect one of those two having their number called here on this big fourth down play. All right, so senior quarterback Joe Brown comes in for North Quincy to replace the injured Andrew Mitten. So Brown comes out, Antoine Allen goes wide right. Hannon and Chase are in the backfield. Yeah, Quincy's got to call a timeout here. They were having a problem defensively. There was confusion uh, with the defense, and uh, Quincy had to call a timeout. So uh, an unusual turn of events here in the second half. Normally, coaches vigorously preserve their timeouts. North called a timeout on the last play because of how important this down is. Um, Coach Connor is now looking to get Minton back in the ball game because it was Quincy that called the timeout. So that's a good sign. Andrew Minton, uh, his hand, I think you were right, John. He must have taken a helmet, taken a helmet shot right on the hand, and the numbness has subsided, and he's feeling ready to go. I don't think they're going to let him in. Or they are. They're going to let Mint. They're not letting Mitten in. So Joe Brown's going to take this snap. Going to give Joe terrific credit here. He has done everything his coaching staff has asked him, and he's shown great leadership with how he's handled the turn of events here this season. And he's going to be in here for a big fourth down play. Presidents now have their defense set. These guys in blue looking to come up with a big stop here. Fourth down and three. Big play in the third quarter with 3.35 three to go, John. Right, ball to the 29-yard line. Marquise Chase gets the ball, and it's going to be close, Jim. It looks like he's going to be right at the first down marker. Quincy thinks he's been stopped. He needed to get to the 26, and it looks like they're going to spot him at the 27. So yeah. turnover on downs. Quincy's defense comes up big. Yeah, he was well short there. A terrific job by the president defense. You're right about that, John. That's exactly what the blue shirts needed. The defense stepped up, re-energizing this Quincy sideline, and here comes the president offense. They're uh, out and uh, ready to go here with a little fire. Curran Jorgensen's got an eye backfield with Reggie Caesar, the deep back. And they give it to Caesar. Nice spin move to go up the middle. Looks like he's going to get a gain of one on the play thanks to that spin move, but he's brought down pretty quick. I'll tell you, Don Sharp, the sophomore, really performing today. He's the guy again. He penetrated, forced Caesar back up the middle, and uh, Kevin Papadopoulos made the tackle. But number 50, Don Sharp, is doing a terrific job on the Red Raider defensive line of forcing Caesar back inside. Jorgensen back to pass, has two receivers down the field, looking down the middle for Heffernan, and it is complete at the 40-yard line. Alex Heffernan, the tight end, comes up big at the 40, and go all the way down to the North Quincy side of the field for a big first down. I'll tell you, I'd like to see a replay here. Heffernan, Heffernan was surrounded by white shirts, and it seemed like each guy was waiting for someone else to make the play there. If you watch the replay, let's, uh, here we go. The ball's up in the air. Now look, 
there's uh, three white shirts around the ball. And um, no one stepped in, so Heffernan able to receive it cleanly. Terrific job by Jorgensen. He continues to do a great job here for the Presidents. All right, he's back to pass again and is complete this time to Jaquan Harris. Short pass for three yards towards the Quincy sideline. It will bring up now a second down and seven for the Presidents. Yeah, there on the coverage for the Red Raiders that time was uh, number 30. I don't know if you have the name on that. He was right there. and the, Oh, that was Joey, Joey Lawler. Lawler yeah, yeah, the guy who made the uh, fumble play earlier. Lawler right there in the coverage doing a nice job. So second down and seven for the Presidents. Jalen Green goes in motion. They give it to Green. Gets to the 35-yard line and up to the 34. We'll bring up now a third down and four for the Presidents. The linebackers for the Red Raiders have done a great job here today. Um, Papadopoulos, Yanovich, they've been very, very solid. And... Um, we mentioned Joey Lawler. He's over on the left side here. That time they went over to the right side. I, I beg your pardon. Lawler's on the right side, and they went to the left side. But the linebackers for the Red Raiders have done a very solid job, and that time you saw them again reacting to what was a nicely designed play. Uh, but they made the tackle here, and now Quincy again. Big situation. It's third down. They're facing a long four yards, and it uh, looks like... They're going to call a timeout. Big third down play. This, we're under a minute here in this third quarter. North Quincy with a 21-17 lead. And uh, the president's getting a timeout on what is a big third down play. John, what do you think? Would you call this four down territory here at the 34? Do you think they'll take two shots at a first down if they don't get it here in the third or what? I, I would think they would. They've had success on, um, on third and fourth down. They've only had a punt once here today. So I would bet uh, Bill Reed, and he's been uh, gambling a lot here today. And uh, like you say, he's not, uh, not too conservative, so I bet he'll go for it. Jorgensen back to pass now in third down, and he's going to get sacked. Oh, wow. He's all the way back at the 45-yard line, and that's where he is brought down. Huge play by the Red Raiders. You see Vinny Tran there, Aris Bagger in there, the kicker, doing some line work. Watch the replay here. And this play went the wrong way from the president's perspective. You see Jorgensen trying to unload, and then everything collapses around him. A terrific job by the Red Raider defense. They step up and make a big play. They're going to force a punt here. Chase is going to be back at about his 20-yard line. And um, this is going to be a big play for the uh, presidents. Alex Heffernan punting. He gets it away. Another good punt. Good a fair job. catch call for by North Quincy Marquise Chase at the 23-yard line. So 23-yard line is where the fair catch is called for, and that will also end the third quarter. So it's 21 to 17 with North Quincy on top, and they're going to start the fourth quarter real quick. But we'll go down to the sideline with Noel Debona. Noel, take it away. Just going to congratulate the four teams for North Quincy uh, Red Raiders, the volleyball team for the girls. They made the playoffs. They went 18 and two, and the Quincy girls went 16 and four, and they went one and one against each other. Um, Quincy beat Chelsea in the first round, and North Quincy beat Cambridge Ridge Latin in the first round, but they, they got stopped in the second round. Uh, also, in other sports, uh, the volleyball teams do well as well. Uh, the other sports, uh, Quincy's soccer team. First time they made the playoffs since 2001, and the girls' soccer team of North Quincy made the playoffs first time since 2007. Thank you. Up to you. Well, nice job, Noel. You're right that uh, today the focus is on football, but both schools have successful programs in other realms. We talked about it a bit with the principals uh, before the game, but uh, these are two fine high schools with student bodies that excel in, all, in multiple areas. You like to see that. But today we're talking football. Here comes the Red Raider offense with Minton back on the field, John. Hand up over to the left side, and the carry will get up to the 25-yard line. Walter Hannon on the carry for the Red Raiders. I wonder if we're going to see any more Andrew Minton scrambles here. I think if I'm Andrew, I'm going to stay in the pocket. He really got popped there. I'm surprised he came back as quickly as he did. 
a tough young man. He's still rubbing that right hand. It's cold out, and I'm sure that it was numbed, and that's why he came off the field. But All right, Quincy comes with a blitz. Hannon with a carry. He goes up the middle. He's able to avoid the blitz, and he pushes the pile forward for a three or four extra yards. He'll get up to the Quincy 34-yard line, and he'll bring up a third and one. Yeah, and on the left of your screen, you see number 11 there, Antoine Allen. Antoine was leading the way. Watch this replay. Watch him and find a seam here, too. I mean, it's just really something how uh, the success that Walter Hannon has as an interior runner. He can find a little bit of a gap and really capitalize on it. He had blue shirts all over him, John, but he picked up, what was it, seven on that play? And uh, now the Red Raiders are in a situation where it's third and short from their 33-yard line. And Marquise Chase goes in motion. They're going to give it to Hannon. He goes over to the left tackle, and he'll pick up the first down, crosses the 35, and gets to the 36, and a Quincy player is down. Looks like he hurt his knee. Yeah, he is in real distress, and you're right. It's the right knees grabbing. You don't like to see this about anybody. This is uh, number 59 for the Presidents, um, Peter Cedroni, a guy who has played terrifically for the President defense today. Um, I like what I'm seeing, John, the way that they're looking at the knee. I wonder if he took a helmet directly on the knee, and that's why, uh, that's why he's feeling such pain. But it would be nice to see that he didn't uh, sustain a ligament injury here. But uh, you want to get Cedroni back and healthy as quickly as you can. And it looks like the way they're getting him up, that's what happened. He's got a sore knee. I think he must have taken a helmet on. If you watch the replay, we've got a replay ready to go, I believe. And if you watch this, let's look for number 59 in blue and see if we can tell what happened. Cedroni's on the left of the screen. Actually, he's penetrating in the middle. Can't really see what happened. It looked like it might have been, like you said, a gym helmet or, or shoulder pads right on the kneecap. That might have uh, stunned him right, th uh, right down. Yeah, they're going to get him over the bench and check him out, and uh, hopefully he's okay. I like watching how he's walking. Um, and it looks like it's not ligament damage. That's good. That's a big plus. All right, for the Red Raiders, first and 10 from the 36. Walter Hannon with a carry, goes over to the right side, and he'll cross the 40 up to the 41 for a gain of five. Rip now a second down and five for the Red Raiders as we approach a nine-minute mark left to go in the ballgame. We're going to ask our statistician, Martin Dunham, about Walter Hannon's numbers, John. It is very impressive how this senior has just taken over the second half here. Um, every year, someone steps up in this Thanksgiving Day game, and right now in this second half, it's been Walter Hannon. He has really stepped up big. He scored the touchdown to put them ahead. He's got 64 yards total this game, and uh, that's really impressive because it's all been inside the tackles. So clock running. Marquise Chase with the ball, runs over the right tackle. He did a nice job to hold on to that ball. Number 22, Danilo Lopes is trying to strip it away from him, and it will be a first down for North Quincy as Chase crosses the 45, gets up to the 47 for the first down. Yeah, this is a big possession for both teams. The clock is running. We're down to 8.20 in the fourth quarter. North Quincy, a 21-17 lead, John. And the Red Raider offense, again, on the move here. They're running the ball inside their tackles, grinding away at the presidents. Peter Cedroni still down on the sideline, being worked on. Like to see him back in there for the presidents because he stepped up big. But let's see how the defense responds here. Danelle Lopes has been on 20 tackles here today, Jim. Big game for him. And it comes up again, Viet Doan, number 20. We've called his name several times here today. He broke through the line and was able to bring down Hannon for a loss of two on the play. Yeah, Doan, a very alert junior. He's the guy on the two tip receptions. And watch this. You're going to see Doan come from the right of your screen into the picture. He's going to pop in. There he is. He just ran the gap. He shot the gap there, focusing on Hannon, wrapped him right up and made the tackle. Big, big play by Vietto on the free safety for the presidents. He read that play beautifully, John, and made the tackle on Hannon. It's second and 11. I formation behind Minton. 
They're going to give it to number 23 for North Quincy High School. And Marquis Chase runs over the left tackle, and he'll pick up a first down. Great run for him. He'll get up to the Quincy High School 40-yard line. Yeah, now we got a president down behind the play. And again, it's another big-name guy. This is number 63, Vinny Tran, the sophomore. He's down. He's a little injured. I don't know if they've got a party they can run in for him for a play or two. Uh, looks like he's staying in. Yeah. But uh, Tran's been a big factor for North Quincy here this year. Yeah, and Marquise Chase living up to his uh, name here as a marquee player. I mean, he just, Hannon and Chase have really been outstanding here as seniors. Just outstanding. Chase now has 157 yards. Thank you, Martin. Pitch goes now to Antoine Allen. He's going to go up to the right side, went back up in the middle, and we'll get a gain of one. It was brought down there by Quincy High School's Alex Alexandre. Yeah, good job by the uh, president defense of reacting. Trying to change things up a little bit. Coach Connor giving the ball to the fresh legs, Antoine Allen, an exciting, dynamic sophomore. I called him the X factor in the first half. I thought he could be a guy who could make a play that would be a difference maker here. And um, they try to get him the ball there. Presidents did a great job of reacting on that one. Turned him back inside, made the tackle. Second and nine with the clock running down to 540 here in this fourth quarter. Hannon with a carry, goes over the right guard, crosses the 35-yard line, and will get up to the 33, it looks like. Bring up a two-yard shy of the first down. Yeah, in on the tackle on that one, Matt Hines again. If you watch this replay, they're inside, inside the tackles. And look at this, he's just... That's just bulwark, John. It's really something. And you got to tip your hat to the white shirts of the Red Raiders because they are just taking it right at the presidents here. Quincy, the defense, they reacted last time. They were able to stop a drive. Let's see if they can again. Um, Cedroni is still over here on the sideline. We hope he can get better. But uh, someone on the defense has got to step in and make a play here. Third down and three. Marquis Chase with the carry. Goes right up the middle. And he'll be right at the first down marker. It looks like with his uh, second effort, he's able to fall forward for the first down, and he does. Yeah, so the chains will the move. Chains. Yep. I'll tell you what, I saw him yet down. Same thing he did last time when he made the big play. He came up, very penetrating uh, run from the safety position. He stuffed the hole there, and the president's almost made the stop. The ball is at the 31, John. And uh, there you see the Red Raiders. They're waiting for the play to come in, trying to collect themselves. You see Marquis Chase there. Um, he stayed down earlier. He's really trying to stretch that tight right calf. He's having problems with it, and every time there's a break, he's trying to stretch it out. So first and 10 for North Quincy. They're at the Quincy 30-yard line. Antoine Allen with the end around, crosses the 30-yard line, going towards the North Quincy sideline. Still on his feet, breaks two tackles. And he'll get brought down finally at the 26-yard line, it looks like. So a nice run there by Antoine Allen to stay on his feet, break a couple tackles, and pick up an extra two yards on the play. Yeah, it's a great call again. We talked about it just a moment ago. Give the ball to the fresh legs. And you saw that there as Allen was able to get outside against a beleaguered Quincy defense. Watch the replay here, and you're going to see Allen as he tries to evade one tackle. It's going to get outside a terrific job by uh, Jack Juan Harris of holding on there. And a tired and beleaguered Jalen Green who's been out on the field all day coming off for a little break after that one. Handoff goes to Walter Hannon up the middle. He'll fall forward right to about the 21-yard line where they need to get for the first down. Official comes over to swat the ball, and it looks like he's going to be... They're going to call for a measurement. Clock stops with 3.17 to go, John. This becomes a critical possession here. With three minutes to go, 
The score, 21-17. If the Presidents can come up with a stop and get the ball back, they are still in this ball game. On the other side, if North Quincy can do something here, maintaining possession and or score, they can wrap this Thanksgiving Day game up. And as we see on our screen, big first down for North Quincy. Nice job by John Macario and Anna El Torre on the field. We want to thank them for their hard work here today. So first down for North Quincy. First and 10 from the President's 21-yard line. They're going to reset the chains and start the clock. So the Red Raiders, with this possession, can run the clock down. They've got the ball at the 20 of the President's. So Quincy's got a tough situation here. Presidents need to come up with a stop and even better, a turnover. This has been an eight-minute drive for the Red Raiders, Jim. This has been the only drive of the fourth quarter so far. North Quincy just keeps the ball moving. Drive side of their own 23-yard line. And on that last play, Walter Hannon took it for an extra gain of two yards up to the 19-yard line. And Quincy's going to call a timeout to stop the clock with 2.51 left to go in the game. Yeah, this is where it gets tough for the Presidents, John. They've got uh, how many timeouts left? Uh, Quincy has two timeouts remaining. Two left. They just had to call one just to stop the clock. So time management becomes an issue in addition to playmaking here. It's second and eight for the Red Raiders. They're looking to burn down this clock. They've got the ball and the clock right where they want it. It's at the Quincy end of the field, inside the 20. Um, and it's a long field for the presence if they do get the ball back. On that side of the field, the blue shirts, the, uh, the guys have been a little discouraged. Uh, they, the defense has been on the field for a while, as you said. This has been a long drive, and the North has been taking it right at them, John. But someone's got to step up. They do not have Cedrone back, I believe. I've seen him on the sidelines. I don't see him there, but he's not out on the field. And that's a big loss for the, the Presidents, because he was a guy who made a couple of big plays for them at critical times. So... Someone else has to step up. Yet Doan has on a couple of plays. We'll see who can come through for the presidents here in a big second and eight. Second down and eight. Marquis Chase with the carry. Goes on the left sideline. Right, Crosses the 10. Five. Walks in. Untouched for the touchdown. North Quincy might have put this game out of reach, Jim. They go up now 27-17 to with a point after the come. Yeah, that's, you saw the fatigue back to the end because once Marquis got the ball, there was no one outside. Watch this replay. You're going to see Chase has a lot of green room there. See as he turns up. Great block on the outside by uh, Red Raiders number 16. Uh, That's Joe, Joe Brown. Brown. The guy we talked about earlier. The senior quarterback who uh, turned the ball over to junior Andrew Mitten while Joe Brown tied up the only guy who had a shot at a tackle there. And Joe's been the holder on all the points after as well. A good snap, good hole, kick is up. And it is no good, goes wide to the left. So a 10-point lead, North Quincy leads 27-17 with 243 left to go in the ball game. Jim Marquise Chase, 25 carries, 179 yards rushing, three touchdowns here today on Thanksgiving. Oh, what a ball game for Marquise Chase. You've got to be really happy for him. Coming in, a lot of pressure on him, a lot of pressure on Re a lot of pressure on Reggie Caesar. They have both reacted very well to the pressure. They both perform well, but right now it's Marquise Chase and the Red Raiders who are in control. Uh, this kickoff becomes important, John, because Quincy has got some game breakers back there. They've got guys who can go the distance. Uh, Jalen Green, Jack Juan Harris, and Reggie Caesar are all guys who can run this ball back. And sure enough, as they take the field, you see numbers 3, 1, and 7 in the south end zone. They're back there to take this ball back. There's the Red Raiders special team. They've been solid all game here. Uh, that group of guys right there in the white shirts have done a terrific job of containing the uh, Quincy president kickoff return crew and uh, this is going to be one of the most important plays of their season here as the Red Raider special teams kickoff unit has to stop the presidents on this one so Bay get a kickoff from the 40 uh, he kicks it deep 
It's going to be fielded by number one, Jalen Green, at the 15-yard line. Runs to his near sideline, gets oh. tripped up there, and a big tackle. And it was number 63, Tran. Vinny Tran. Oh, yeah. Green, Green had a lot of open field ahead of him. Watch this replay. Jalen, there's a shot of him coming off the scourge. If you watch, you're going to see great blocking by the presidents. And as he turns it up, there's Tran tripping him up. But had Jalen get outside there, Walter Hannon was there to greet him. But there was a lot of green field ahead of him. So Jalen with a good return, a solid return to the 32. Good field position. Look for Curran Jorgensen, who's had a terrific game, to go to the air here. He's got two wide outs to his right. High formation behind Jorgensen. He does look to pass. Rolling out, rolling out. He's going to fire it down to the right sideline. And it is caught. Did he stay in bounds? No, it was caught by Jaquan Harris, but he could not stay in bounds. It was down at the North Quincy, excuse me, at the Quincy 45. Well designed play. It was right along the sideline. If you watch this replay, you're going to see Jorgensen was looking that way the whole time. He sets up, he delivers the ball out there, and Harris makes a terrific catch, but he's right along the sideline, and he could not stay in bounds. There you're going to see him when he makes the catch. He's right on the sideline marker. North Quincy getting a timeout here, John, with 2.28 to go. Red Raiders leading 27-17. Uh, some of the presidents, they've been out there a long time going both ways, John. They're tired. Good timeout by Bill Reardon. He's down there trying to energize his guys. On our screen, you see the Red Raider huddle. There's Coach Connor going over a couple of things with his defense. Kenny McPhee on the right. They're trying to tell the guys this is a bend, not break situation. They want to avoid big plays. And, uh, of course, if you're a blue shirt, the presidents want to make one. We mentioned, Sean, Curran Jorgensen has done a terrific job all game. He's really been in control of this offense. He's been very dynamic out there. Love to see him step up and... Uh, do something here with 2.28 to go on this final drive here. All right, Jorgens has got pitch it to Reggie Caesar. Caesar running to the near sideline, cross the 30, he'll get up to the 32. He'll bring up a third down and about five to go for the Presidents. Nice job by Chris Karen, another senior, making the tackle from behind. No huddle for the Presidents. All right, from the shotgun, Jorgensen. He's going to fire over the middle of the field, and it is tipped and almost intercepted over the middle of the field is Kevin Papadopoulos for the Red Raiders. Yeah, Andrew Minton in on the play as well. Nice job of tipping that ball, and so this is it. It's fourth and five for the Presidents with 2.02 to go. They're going to huddle back on this one because of the uh, incomplete pass. The clock stops, but here come the Presidents. They break the huddle, and this could be the last play of this offensive season. We'll see what they do here. They need to get to the 37-yard line for the first down. And looks like we might have a flag thrown. Looks like it might be on Quincy with a false start. We have a dead ball foul. False start on the false offense. Start. Still fourth down. President. Yeah, that's the fatigue factor there, John. I mean, um, the guys who were out there in the trenches of the presidents have been going both ways the whole game. They just had to uh, withstand a prolonged Red Raider drive, and that was a uh, mental error by a president who's uh, been under a lot of stress for the last eight minutes. But right. here we go, Jorgensen. Four, fourth down and ten. Jorgensen looking down the field for Heffernan. Has him, and it is oh. incomplete. Heffernan had it. It went in and out of his hands. He was being battled for it by Antoine Allen. It goes incomplete, and late flags are thrown. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Allen hung in there, but to his credit, so did uh, Heffernan. It looked like it was going to become yet another tip play there. Um, let's see, the call I think is going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct. We have a dead ball foul, unsportsmanlike conduct. On North Quincy, first down. 
So it happened after the play, so it will remain North Quincy ball on turnover on downs, but it'll be 15 yards back. All right, if you watch this replay, you're going to see uh, number 11, Antoine Allen, on the coverage. Jorgensen puts the ball in the air to give Heffernan a shot at it. Allen gets in there and tips it, but watch, the ball's still in play. Heffernan still trying to wrap it up, but there it hits the ground, and uh, that's it. That signals the bell here in this ball game. The Red Raiders now just need to take some snaps. There's 142 to go, John. They're up 10 points. That's two possessions. So quarterback Andrew Minton and the Red Raider offense just have to run out this clock, and it's going to be number three in a row for the uh, Red Raiders. All right, so Minton under center. Walter Hannon with a carry. Runs right up the middle. We'll cross the 40 and get up to the 37-yard line, and Quincy will call a timeout. They have one remaining. John, let's talk about these guys real quickly as uh, the clock runs down for the Red Raiders. Uh, the linemen, the guys who have been in the trenches, they've done a terrific job all game, really worked hard at it. And uh, we're going to talk about number 63, Vinny Tran, who's gone both ways. He's been out there most of the game and done a terrific job uh, leading the way inside for Walter Hannon and Marquise Chase. Um, also out there on the line for the Red Raiders. We've got um, Ian Dunphy, a right tackle. Uh, Don Sharp has been going both ways and we talked about him a lot. Matt Daigle, the center. Mecky Pearson, the right guard. These are guys who have really worked and slogged here, and they won today's trench battle, John, and uh, that's why this game has gone the way it has, which is the Red Raiders' direction. With 1.36 to go, it's 27-17 north, John, and uh, has Quincy got any timeouts left? I have one timeout remaining for them. Handoff goes right up the middle, and Walter Hannon breaks two tackles, crosses the 20-yard line, and gets brought down at the 15. And that will definitely wrap it up. Walter Hannon got hit behind the line of scrimmage, hit again two yards past it, and went all the way forward for a big first down up to the 15-yard line. Well, it's somewhat appropriate that Hannon is the guy they're leaning on here to win the game. He's been there all game for the Red Raiders, special teams defensively and offensively inside the tackles. Walter Hannon has been spectacular. He and Chase... Just took over this ball game, John, and uh, terrific senior leadership. Every year we talk about seniors. That last run just put Walter over 100 yards as well. He's got 103 yards, and uh, the two seniors, Chase and Hannon, have uh, led their team to victory today. And a couple little pops going on here at the end. A lot of yellow flags. Um, Good job by the coaches of getting involved right away. The frustration is seeping in on the part of the presidents, and you do feel for them because these guys have worked their tails off, John, and the fatigue factor became an issue. The critical drive by the Red Raiders at the foul, end of the third quarter. Personal foul, automatic first down. The big drive at the end of the third quarter that put them up was the one that took all the gas out of the presidents, and uh, that pretty much sound of the death knell in this ball game. So with 56 ticks to go, it's North Quincy 27, Quincy 17, first and 10 Red Raiders inside the 10, but uh, Andrew Minton knelt on the last play. We can expect it'll be all kneel downs to win this ball game uh, for the Red Raiders, John. Well, it's certainly been quite an exciting game, Jim, right from the get-go, from the opening drive where Quincy went down the field and scored a touchdown on a 68-yard touchdown pass. To North Quincy responding right back with a big, long drive of their own. Marquise Chase has three touchdowns here today. Uh, probably the MVP of the game, yeah. um, certainly for North Quincy. Uh, Quincy High School have to give big credit to Kevin Jorgensen. Came out on a big start on Thanksgiving Day game and uh, led Quincy down the field on several drives. But North Quincy is going to come out here as a 15 seconds tick off the clock. A big, huge victory. Marquise Chase goes out on top after his senior season. Again, three touchdowns and a big win here for North Quincy as they're going to take the 79th annual Thanksgiving Day football game 
by a score of 27-17 as the clock ticks off. Yeah, great stuff here. There you see the Red Raiders jumping around. Nice shot by Peter Doherty of a jubilant Red Raider sideline. Uh, a classy group of presidents here lining up. They played a terrific ball game, but just ran out of gas here in this second half. And uh, tough, tough loss for the presidents. Big win for the Red Raiders. And uh, they keep their winning streak alive. They go to number three in a row here. And uh, what an exciting and uh, fun Thanksgiving Day football game we just enjoyed here, John. Yep, with the way North Quincy now has 31 wins in the series. Quincy still leads the series 43-31-5. <laughs> to five. Good of you to point out, Quincy High grad John Caleri. <laughs> <laughs> but e either way, quite an exciting game. We mentioned during the pregame show uh, that this game uh, divides and unites the city all at the same time. And no matter who you are rooting for here today, you're going to leave saying, wow, what a great game. And like we mentioned a couple times here today during the telecast, one of the best Thanksgiving Day games we've seen in the past 10 to 15 years. Yeah, you got to be happy for the kids because it was a tough season. Injuries on the Quincy side, numbers on the north side, uh, both teams with only two wins. But they're able to show up today, John, and uh, really encapsulate their season. It's what goes on today that they're going to remember and what goes on today that defines their season You've got to be really happy for the seniors at North who uh, are going to be able to say that they won the Thanksgiving Day game. Um, Curran Jorgensen and the seniors at Quincy played with great pride, performed really well. you got to give them terrific credit. So um, it's a great day for the uh, city of Quincy here as two football teams end their season with an exciting game. North Quincy coming out on top 27-17 at John why don't you give us some of the final stats? North Quincy's time of possession, 26 minutes and 33 seconds to 17 minutes and 27 seconds for the Presidents. North Quincy had 317 yards, um, 317 yards all on the ground. Um, Marquise Chase, 25 rushes for 179 yards, three touchdowns as we mentioned. Walter Hannon, 16 rushes for 103 yards, so both of them go over the century mark for rushing here today. Vinny Tran, nine tackles for North Quincy. For Quincy High School, uh, they had 64 yards on 21 carries on the ground. And Curran Jorgensen was 6 for 12 passing for 190 yards. Reggie Caesar, 12 carries for 66 yards rushing. Danilo Lopes, 22 tackles. Outstanding game for Danilo wow. Lopes on the defensive side of the ball for the Presidents. Yeah, that's great stuff. And um, Danilo and a few other guys really performed for the Presidents. It just wasn't there today. Are we going to be? Are we going to cover any of the uh, presentation down there? We've got the superintendent down there with the trophy. Yeah, we're going to try to get down there so we can find where the trophy is. We see the superintendent congratulating Jim, Co and uh, we're going to see if we can get some audio down there as well. I believe. Yeah, I see John Mercurio in the, the midst, and uh, they're down there on the 35-yard line. There's a nice shot. There's John, and the superintendent is ready to present the trophy. All right, let's hear some audio down there as well. Ah. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, congratulations to you. Congratulations. Third year in a row, third year in a row. Before I present it to you, I'm going to present it to Coach, Coach Metzler, Coach Connor, and let them say a couple of words to you. It's about the quality. Welcome home. Congratulations, you guys. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Guys are great. Congrats. All right, well, North Quincy hoists the city championship trophy for the third year in a row. Uh, as you can hear down on the field there, the play is certainly quite excited. Uh, Principal Earl Metzler and Coach Jim Connor down there accepting the trophy and immediately turning it over to all the players who are uh, certainly happy to have that and all going to get a chance with it as they get down there for a team photo as well. Uh, just a great game overall. We want to thank all of our crew here at Quincy Access TV coming out 
and spending their morning uh, bringing this game to you at home. On camera today, we have Howard McKay, Glenn Busher, Peter Doherty, Anna El Torre, and John Mercurio. Down in the truck doing a great job throughout the day on graphics was Grace Busher. Our technical director was Michael Jarvey. On audio, Frank Tanzi. Replay, Bill Early. Our engineer, Chris Potter. Our director, George Capadonna. And our executive producer, Elizabeth Campbell. So we want to say a great job to everyone. Also, we want to thank Martin Dunham, our statistician up here in the booth. Yeah, John, I'd also like to thank the crew. We've had a really fun season. They've done a terrific job. Um, we weren't here as often as we uh, normally are, but uh, when we were here, we had a great job. They did great work. It was a cold day today for the folks on the camera, but good job. So we're wrapping up another season here with a great Thanksgiving Day game. All right, excellent. Well, great Thanksgiving Day game. It looks like Noel Bone is down in the field. Noel, take it away. I'm down here on the field. I'm down here on the field with Marcus Chase. You know, Marquise Chase. Congratulations. At the beginning of the middle of the season, we were talking about you going down with that shoulder injury and said you come back. Three touchdowns today. How's it feel? Oh, it feels awesome. The line was great. I wouldn't do it without them. The line was great. Walter Block, great. For the, for the team. For the team. Giving it up to his fullback here, Walter Hannon. Yeah, the line. Everyone did great. Everyone was, it was a great team game. It was awesome to win it. It was awesome to win. Congratulations, Kate. Good Thank you. job. I thank, we want to thank Noel for all his hard work down the field throughout the season as well. Great job, Noel, uh, bringing us coverage down the field throughout the season and all the games that we had here. So an exciting season of high school football has come to a conclusion with North Quincy hoisting the City Championship Trophy for the third year in a row, beating the crosstown rival, the Quincy Presidents, by a score of 27-17. to For Jim Timmons and all the crew here at Quincy Access TV, Happy Thanksgiving, everyone, from Quincy Access TV. We'll see you next year for Quincy Access TV Sports.